Hey. Welcome, welcome everyone back to a brand new episode of Animazing, the only podcast show that happens, but you never know about it. Okay, I don't know what I was going with that one. <laughs> anyway, it is the new year, but I think Dumbbell, was Dumbbells just like a couple of days before New Year's, or was it like a few days after New Year's? Before New Year's, because New Year's. I remember after New Year's I went directly to Seattle. Yeah, yeah, that, that was one of the things that... Okay, yeah, that was one of the things that that tripped me up because th- that was that whole thing where I'm like, I know you're gone for the first nine days, so I'm not going to bother you. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, when I tried again, it was like two weeks in, so my, my internal clock was already messed up, um, especially since I'm putting 2019. Thank you, that's going to happen for the next two weeks. Yeah. But yeah, you came back from Seattle, and I just finished a Death Stranding, which... Oh, how was it? I really liked it. Um, the thing is, it's very, very apparent that this was a movie he wanted to tell, but he had to put gameplay in sometimes. Yeah. So that's why it's like, man, a delivery game for a story like this just doesn't work. And, uh, but the thing is, some of the delivery stuff was actually really funny because oh, yeah. of, of a lot of the gate, there's a gauge for everything. There's a gauge for your pee. There's a gauge for your boots, yep. which I I tried to call the game's bluff, and I'm like, oh, what happens if I break my boots? I don't think they're going to do anything too bad. Your boots are completely destroyed. Be careful what you step on, or else you will stop bleeding. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, no. Yeah, you can hurt Sam's feet like that. So, like, and then when you go rest them up and everything, he actually, there's actually a scene where he actually takes off his nail because it's, like, you know, messed up. Yeah. Yeah, um, that I got a scene because I did make him bleed where he sat down in his room, took the boot off, and he, he just, like, pours the blood out. I'm like, mm, <laughs> I don't like this. But, no, it, it was a very stupid game, which is typically Kojima. It's very totally inconsistent. Um, he's telling a very dumb story, but is trying to talk down to you because he thinks he's being deep. But the one thing that absolutely fucking worked in here is the BB. Mm-hmm. The entire story with the BB, Sam's relationship with the BB, uh, Mads Mikkelsen, uh, the Mads Mikkelsen character, yeah, who is who keeps talking to you every time, like you, um, every time you, um, you, you, you plug into him, yeah, and shows up as like an actual character, like freaking fifteen hours into the game. Oh yeah, the um, when they, when he's so part of the assault teams. Yeah, which is so weird, <laughs> but but it it's awesome and. Uh, the the whole lead up to that and why and why he keeps seeing him when he logs into the BB and what Sam was and that's just this very powerful scene that like look just watch a, watch all the cutscenes of this online if you don't want to play it but the entire game is completely worth it when Norman Reedus finally tells Hideo Kojima I'm I'm getting tired of acting like my character in The Walking Dead I want to act goddammit <laughs> so like there's this final scene where he is just like selling you on this horrible on this very sad scene and I actually caught myself not tearing up but like flat out sobbing oh. <laughs> like I was crying and like so so sad oh bb wake up oh wait what was the baby's name oh it was called lou yep <laughs> yeah. oh wow yeah <laughs> that's why i found it funny um but but yeah he he's like uh, i'm like no lou get up no um oh, for me i think one one of the things that i really liked about uh, what i like um for me every time when there's a new game the one thing i always like the most is the memes that come out of it yeah Oh and, yeah, there's a lot of them. And there was a lot, of, especially when it comes to like Amazon or FedEx employee workers. Because there's this one where like, you know the blast fight with Troy Baker? Yeah. Where there's like Troy Baker assaulting an Amazon Prime worker on the way to his, to his delivery. Yeah. Or like all these other things like Troy, ba- Troy Baker trying to steal packages from Amazon workers circa 2020. Yeah, I, I think uh, pizza places don't do this anymore. But there was an old one too where it's like... Troy Baker trying to stop the delivery man, the pizza delivery man, so he could get his pizza for free. Yeah. I'm like, damn, that's an old meme because they don't even do that anymore. Oh yeah, like the thirty minutes or less where it's free. Yeah, and then it's like, yeah, they they wouldn't do. No one does that anymore because they realize, oh wait, my pizza's not all the way cooked. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, it's um, what was I gonna say? Uh, but yeah, overall, I really enjoyed the game. I don't think I'm ever gonna play it again. Um, no, I mean, I'm, I'm too busy playing Cold Rain right now. I'm having way too much fun with that game. Yeah, the Kingdom Hearts DLC actually just came out and I finished that. It was like, the actual campaign was like four hours long and then they're like, 
oh, if you want the final ending, you got to do this boss rush. Huh. And I'm like, oh, I can't beat them because this is some, like, level 99 shit. No, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. But, fun fact, Dylan Spouse is now a character in Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> Yeah. From Zack and Cody? <laughs> yeah, yeah. One of the twins from Zack and Cody, I think it's Zack. Uh, Cole is uh, Cody. Yeah, Cole Sprouse is Cody. Yeah, so Dylan Sprouse plays like this new character called Gezora, and I didn't recognize him at all. It's like when you when you beat beat the campaign all the way through, this little cast, this like little credit pops up on the corner and it says Gezora, Dylan Sprouse. I'm like, what? <laughs> God damn it, he's not even a part of the Disney network anymore. Are you guys still plucking Disney kids? Oh, man. Like, yeah. Christy Carlson Romano is still in the game as Yuffie. Oh, shit. Yeah, Kim Possible. Damn, they're, they're really trying to go back. Yeah, well, she was Yuffie in Kingdom Hearts 1, and then they got, they replaced her for a game. Mm -hmm. And then now it's her again, and I'm like, wow. No man, I think for think for me like well well, well meanwhile you're getting DLCs. I'm still waiting for the Code Vein DLCs to drop because the only thing we have is just an alternative. The only thing that Code Vein has right now for DLC is an alternative costume for Mia, and then just unlock it uh, early. That's it. Yeah. But it's a season pass though, so any DLCs that you get onwards, you just download them and you get it for free. Yeah. So they they are promising something more. No, yeah, because they were supposed to be coming out in November. Yeah. But they backed it off because again, they they wanted to make sure they did it right, so like they're just taking more time to improve it and everything. Yeah, because if there's one thing I really like about that game, it's a very polished game. It is. Like, if there's one thing people can say good about Death Stranding 2 is that it's a polished game where I barely had any bugs happen. So, mm -hmm. playing Code Vein, especially since I played Doc, not Doc Souls, but like Bloodborne, yeah. there's a lot of bugs in that game. And in this one, I'm like, this is really polished. It's, it's nice. so hard as balls though, but it's very polished. Oh uh, no, man! The thing about Code Vein is that it's not as difficult. It's more friendly player to players um, who are new to the Souls franchise. This is again, you get a partner and everything. If you mm. die, they can revive you on the spot, so yeah. it's not immediate punishment. Yeah, you just gotta be careful with the environmental stuff because there's no helping you there. Environmental stuff, and then also the fact that um, oh, what was it? Ah. Uh, was I gonna say? I was gonna say something, something, um, something witty. Something I forgot. <laughs> I hate when that happens. Uh, but what were we saying before we get on with the show? Oh yeah, Toro Hedoro. Yeah, yeah. They're doing the Inu Yashiki thing again. Yes. And it's getting me mad. <laughs> I'm like, oh, this is probably gonna be like a 23 episode series, isn't it? Because that first episode was the whole manga again. Yes. You saw. It. You yeah. noticed that how they went right back? Like, um, they already got to the insect guy right away when they turned on. When they turned um when they turned her into the insect yeah and then you got Ebisu who um who like just came out of the door and he's like oh and like he just like tore her face off yeah Jesus I forgot about that too <laughs> it's been a while since I read the first manga and I'm like oh shit I forgot that's what happened to I her. know I have forgotten too that they like had, like they were trying they were trying to rescue her and then the while while they were trying to rescue her just like face peels off yeah and um yeah but but like the the whole thing is. Yeah, the insect guy in Ibisu, they're not until like... Later. La the, the, yeah, they're not until like the second half of that manga. And they're pretty thick, like, volumes. It is. So the first episode should have just been like the beginning we saw establishing Cayman and um, Nikado, which yeah. they did but skimmed over a little bit. Um, there was the conversation with N and, uh, what's his name? I forget his name, but I love that character. Which one? Uh, the, the kid with the exploding powers. Oh! Yeah, when he goes to N after the funeral and they talk. Oh yeah, like, the one that they broke his finger. Yeah, that's like a way longer conversation and they cut it down. So, yeah, they're doing the Inu Yashiki thing again and I'm like... You guys are gonna probably cut out some of my favorite little moments. Oh yeah, man, but hey, at least it did my girl Moe justice. Yeah, yeah. Um, funny, I thought she was bl I think there's a color photo of her as blonde. I think so, but I think they must look at a silver because they made her silver hair in the anime. Yeah, they probably also did that so people wouldn't confuse her with uh, Nikado. Yeah. Too. I like it, I like the silver hair thing. Uh, noise still scares me because... Right there. <laughs> hey, uh, I'm I'm still with you when it comes to that uh 
Chain Girl in Cabin 9. Oh, yeah, the one with the back muscles. Yeah, I'm like... Mm. <laughs> when she had to take off her jacket just so, like, just so she could breathe a little. Yeah. Um, let me... Oh, it might be the plastic. Oops. Let me back this up. No, you can move that around as much as you want. Yeah, but you have a lot of glass stuff and I'm not really looking, so I don't want to be like, Oh, no, all your pints. <laughs> no, you're good, you're good. No, I'm kidding, guys. He doesn't have a uh, table full of pints. As of right now. No, but I have a shit ton of alcohol surrounding us on the right. That is true. How much do you remember of... How much of Seattle do you remember? <laughs> Not a lot, pretty much. I, I never went crazy. We literally just went... Uh, the, the most we've drank was literally the last night when we were coming back home. We were playing a game of Jackbox and I made everybody oh. some um, Korean some Korean style um, some co Korean style cocktails. Ooh. Which turned out actually a lot better than I expected. Yeah. Oh. Which, which is what made it easy for us to get um, a little bit more than buzzed. Yeah. Actually, speaking of, um, you know, since we were talking about the Isekai month and possibly what we want to do, the creator of this podcast is actually a guy who works on all the party games. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Jackbox? Mm-hmm. The Jackbox party pack and all that. Really? Yeah. Um, there's even a person who pops up in the beginning of, like, every episode who tells you, yes, everything you're about to hear is not real because, like, the whole thing is, like, it's a conspiracy. Yeah. So, um, oh, here we go. No, wait. Where's all the... Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Sorry. I'm going to play an example of it. Begins. Yeah, this so guy is apparently a narrator and almost all the games. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Tim Smith is. Show is a <laughs> no, yeah, I can, I can, I can definitely hear it. Oh, damn. Transdimensional disturbance in real yeah. <laughs> I actually like because occasionally they will advertise a Jackbox game and then it will be like, yes, and the game also has Tim Smith in, <laughs> which a lot of um, his credits go unchecked in this podcast and it's all like, Oh, it's this guy. He just can't acknowledge that that's also him. <laughs> but yeah, no, um... No, like, the, the, um, the, the, the party packs make for excellent for, like, drinking games. I think my favorite one to watch online is, like, the one that's supposed to be, like, a murder party. Oh, those are fav my favorite ones. Yeah. The, the murder trivia nights and everything. Yeah, those are really cool. Um, I know they're all over the Switch right now, too. Like, they're putting all the Jackbox games on Switch. And, like, the newest one was on the Switch. But yeah, um... Oh, that's what makes me cry. <laughs> I'm regretting now, not, not, not only a Nintendo, because uh, like one of my comp favorite companies, they're making a game for the Nintendo Switch, and I'm like, fuck, beta tests are about to open up. I hope, it, I hope they have a PC version for this, because I don't have Nintendo products. Yeah, and then you can't really splurge on one right now. Huh? Yep. Yeah. Especially now that they're going to be announcing the new system soon. The new Switch? The new generations, like the PS5 and everything else? Yeah, yeah, there's still the possibility. There, there hasn't been any flat out thing yet, but there is still a possibility that uh, that Nintendo might need to put something out to compete with them. But this whole talk of like the PS Pro, which will be on the level of a PS5, I'm like, Nintendo doesn't give a shit about that stuff. Mm -hmm. They're gonna build one to make it look a little nicer, but we're talking about early day PS4 nice. Yep. Yeah, but Nintendo's never gonna make something on the level of the Xbox. Or PS4 because that's not their prerogative. They're like, we want good, fun games for people. Yep. Yeah. Oh, and the Doom Eternal's gonna be coming out March. Yeah, which was on the Switch, but who's gonna get that on the Switch? <laughs> oh, but that second trailer sold it for me. Yeah. Man, that second game's gonna get a lot of people mad, though. I'm like, wait... Yeah, those weren't robots I saw in the trailer? Those are supposed to be angels? Oh boy. Oh yeah, the <laughs> angels. Oh no, <laughs> this is gonna get so many people mad. And I love it. Um, now, because I'm a Satanist, just because I don't really care by this point. You watch anime long enough and they vilify. Do, even, I'm not wrong though, right? Isn't Christianity kind of big in Japan? No, no, well, it's not that big in Japan at all. Oh, okay. Man, someone told me why. Most most people most people over there most people over there just like it's religion it's just kind of more like a like a back of the mind kind of thing you know kind of celebrating oh yeah like we celebrate the holidays but everything else is kind of like up up in the air yeah and we have beliefs but they're not necessarily religious yeah like, like the shrines and all that no yeah but, so like for because like it was so, um, most of the time, most of the thing that um, Japanese people usually um go with is just like Shintoism beliefs you know going to like the going to like. Going through like the um, like watching New Year's like praying for good luck or making the charms and everything. Yeah. Oh. But 
it's to the point where it's more pop culture right now, where it's like, you know, something just people do like on a second, you know, it's just like a second guess, like, you know, how like Mexican families usually like celebrate Dia de los Muertos, even though, you know, that's like a separate thing. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So someone lied to me. So yeah, because, you know, like I was saying earlier, you watch anime long enough and you'll see them vilify every religious aspect ever. Like I got back to reading Drifters because oh. I got tired for waiting for the, got tired waiting for the anime. <laughs> Jesus is the antagonist. Yeah. Jesus is like not just a bad guy, but he's like the dark, the, the dark evil overlord whose face is covered. Yeah. <laughs> but they're flat out like, yeah, mankind betrayed me. I have the ability to raise people up and let's have a scene where I raise my hands up and you flat out see holes in the my stigmata. Bones. Yeah, yeah. stigmata. Yeah. It's like, oh boy, this is Jesus. Um, he made fun of the Vatican in his last anime and now he's just going for the head <laughs> and that's the funny thing too because in the manga they actually have um, they actually have a little side panel where they introduce him so it's like yeah it's like in my previous life I was actually a neat I used to live with my parents my dad was a carpenter and my mom was you know she's like she apparently she had me as a virgin birth yeah. So there was a lot of controversy back then. Yeah, and there's still that whole thing where people are like, no, it's not Jesus, it might be this other guy. And it's like, that doesn't make any sense. We all know that um, uh, Kota Hirano really does not give a shit if he gets people mad. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's... And then there's that whole anime with uh, Jesus and the Buddha roommates. Oh yeah, and, um, Saint Sonicha. Yeah, I'm like, that's weird. But yeah, like, going back before we jump into the show with... Uh, like Doro Hidoru, I'm just glad I got an anime. I just really hope that they don't skip over like that little moment. Like I hope they don't Inu Yashiki it where they cut off like a character subplot because mm -hmm. they're like, oh well, he's not too important to the plot. Oh yeah. So I could imagine them cutting off like Mikado, like really downplaying Mikado's brother's role and maybe yeah. even getting rid of that episode, getting rid of that part where Mikado goes back in time oh, yeah. to stop her friend from dying. Yeah. Because that one, I the friend never comes into play, so I can imagine them cutting that off, but it's a very important thing in its own way. And the funny thing is, Dora Fedora is still considered a cult because when I was talking about talking about it to people in um, Anime Impulse, nobody knew what it was. No, 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 no. So I, it's still a cult. Yeah, it needs to get into... What part of it, what part would it be where it does, it would have to be the part where it came in, um, where something happens to came in, I won't say anything now, but where it came in changes again. I think that would probably be the turning point where it might get a lot of people, but mm -hmm. yeah, um, Dorothy Dora need, needs uh, episode 19. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nah, I just wanna. I, I, for me, the one part I hope they don't swallow, um, they don't cut off is when they're playing baseball and like Kamen's like been bugged the whole time because you know there's like one guy who's like keeps hitting on Nikado. Yeah. He's like, why am I so pissed off now? <laughs> yeah, I really hope that's one they don't cut off and they kind of. They, they kind of can't because they already put Christopher Johnson in the opening. Yeah. And that's where he shows up. That's like the introduction chapter for him. So. Yep. Hopefully they don't. And also that is probably one of the funniest parts in the manga too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so far it's beautifully animated and... Yeah, the 3D is not that bad. Yeah, it's, they're, they're getting better. Even Yashiki, you could tell they wanted to do the whole thing in 3D, but then they looked at some of the 3D parts so they kept swapping. Mm -hmm. This one, it's... Uh, Consistent. Yeah, it, it's consistent. There are parts where you could tell characters are 2D and then there are other parts where it's like, oh, the 3D models look really good. Um, what is it though? That company that did freaking Beastars and Land of the Lusters, I haven't even seen Beastars yet because I'm waiting for that. I haven't, I've only seen two episodes, that's about it. Yeah, yeah, I'm waiting for the dub because I think Ben Biscuit might be in it because he tweeted at Netflix saying, Hey, when are you gonna put Beastars up? I wanna see my wolf baby boy legally. Ooh. And I'm all like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and then he's like, and then they're like, oh, it's coming first thing in 2019. Still no announcement. I'm hoping it's in February. 2019 or 2020? 2020, yeah. Because I was like, mm, that's last year. And that's when they that's, that's what barely kind of came in the latter half of 19. Yeah, it, it came in the ending. So, yeah. Hopefully he's in it. Hopefully he's Lugosi. Uh, I don't know that. I also didn't know that Dora Hedora was on Netflix. Um, was on Netflix either. Yeah, that was another thing though. Um, I don't think I'm gonna wait for that though. <laughs> I think I'll watch that. <laughs> I'll fight. Mm -hmm. And that's the funny thing too, man. Because the opening to Dora Hedora tells you nothing yet everything about the anime. Yeah. 
Oh my god, yeah. The, because it's flat out like... They, do, they symbolize major characters with little objects. Like, you see... Fuck, what was the creature's name again? You, you see End's little pet chasing Christopher Johnson. Yeah. And then she picks up on Mushroom and throws it. Yeah. And then you see, like... Her breaking the gills and everything, and you just see, like, while Cayman, like, oh, an army of Cayman's walking in. Yeah, and then he has... He gets Gyoza head at one point, and then she's chopping up the meat, and she has the Mikado demon face. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's flat out, like... T- showing you things, but it's one of those like you read the manga and you're like, oh, I get all of that, and then you read you you're watching the anime and you're like, what kind of crap am I getting myself into? <laughs> this is this scares me. This is gonna get weird. But yeah, enough about that because if it's good, we're gonna talk about it regardless. I've been wanting to talk about the manga by itself since uh, I discovered it in twenty sixteen. No, uh, yeah, I think I discovered it from Twitter because I'm um. No, not Twitter. Um, Tumblr before it became the uh, monstrosity it is now. It 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 got its real. It got its big start on Tumblr. Um, my old friend, she actually saw a lot of art of, of it on Tumblr, mm-hmm. and when she saw a friend of ours hand the manga back to me, she asked if she could start reading it, and I'm like, yeah, sure. So yeah, it it's been all. It had like a life on Tumblr. It did. And then it it became that series where. It's wait. This is a Viz signature series. I never heard about it. What what the fuck is this? Um, no, for me, what the, for me, what I like about it is pretty much pretty much like just how just how like the, um, how everything like the background and everything is drawn because I like that messy kind of art style. Yeah, I had a problem with it initially because I'm like I'm very used to like the muddy blackness, so I'm like, wow, this looks cleaner and more colorful than I expected. But when the actual anime came out, you could tell they. I don't know, maybe someone saw it and said, you need to fix that. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it was just a a pre-render. But you see it now and it's like, oh, this is exactly how I imagine the world now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Oh, wait, no, not yet. Okay. (laughs) Jumping the gun there, I see. Yeah. Um, There we go. So many openings. So many great openings to this. Anyway, guys, um, this, the... This episode, the actual show itself may be a little short because we're going to be covering half of it. Um, That's why we did a little tech and talk in the beginning. Yeah, which is fine. I, I kind of want to do those a lot, but there are times uh, those would go on for 40 minutes and we have, <laughs> and we have like a 25 episode show to do. And it's all like, <laughs> mm, maybe we shouldn't do that unless we have to. And that, that's why those little um, tech and talks happen in between the actual review. Especially we, especially when it's time um, moments when we haven't seen each other in weeks because then like a lot of stuff happens. <laughs> a lot more stuff happens than I anticipated and then we end up talking about oh, yeah, is this coming out and then oh, are you watching this and then oh, did this happened too. Yeah, like how Danny and the Electric Fox um, it turns into the cartoon podcast when I don't see him in a month or so because we're just talking about cartoons and stuff. Um, and then with us, we'll just be talking about other things, pop culture stuff, and of course, obviously, anime things. Mm-hmm. Um, gotta see Withering with you. Apparently, that's the new Makoto Shinkai love fever everyone's having. I still gotta finish a lot of stuff I have. <laughs> I've only been a- out of all the series I've watched um, from last year, I've only finished Dr. Stone and Fire Force. Yeah. I've, I, yet, I've yet to finish everything else I started. Yeah, I wanna watch Fire Force and... Oh shoot, what else was it? Oh right, remember how we have that list of the three anim- the three or four anime that got overlooked because of Yuri on us? Yeah. I actually started watching like March comes in like a lion, and I'm like, holy shit, if I had seen this, like, when it came out, this probably would have been fifth on that list of stuff that got pushed off. Some like, in the lane. Uh, remember they were, remember they were advertising the hell out of that in um, Akiba Fest? Yeah, yeah, because it was owned by Aniplex. Yeah. Yeah, that is a freaking downer of a show, but Yeah, because of the depression and everything the guy's going through. Yeah, it, and then when they start going into his life, where it's like... Yeah, you are the adoptive child of this of your shogi mentor, and then you eventually became his preferred child, and the way the other children resent you, it's like, oh, oh dude, that's horrible. That's a horrible feeling right there. Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> like the. Do you remember when they were opening Christmas gifts? Oh yeah. Yeah, one got a game, and the other one's like, why am I still getting toys? And it's like. 
he gets a shogi board and it's like, yeah, that told them exactly what he thought of them. I'm like, oh, God, this is a, like a million gut punches. Um, Nichols looking back. Yeah, it really doesn't. We'll get to that one day. <laughs> yeah, I'm halfway through the series now. It's like a 44 episode series. I'm halfway. No, my friend watched it. He like loved that show a lot. Yeah, it, it's one of those shows I just want to like push. It's going to be one of those shows I need to push on everyone. But like... Oh, update. I will be going to Anime Expo this year. Okay. I met, um, I met a group over at, um, at Anime Impulse and they invited me to be in the cosplay group. I'm going to be the Chrome of the Dr. Stone group. Cool. Show me a photo of that if you go. Are we gonna try to do country roll again? Yes, I'm doing it for sure. Okay, I'll go. I'll tag along too. Um, we just gotta see if Ben will do it. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, I want. I think I might not do country roll anymore. Uh, so I'll probably just make like not country roll. I won't do anime expo anymore for the foreseeable future. I will make country roll a regular thing, especially since it's like. If I go to Country Roll, if I go to Country Roll, then I can't go to Anime Expo. If I go to Anime Expo, I can't go to Country Roll. It's one of those like double things, yeah. No, and then the reason why I'm going there because I'm probably gonna go for two days, just because they're gonna be um they're gonna be cosplaying the last the last day of AX as um as the as the um Doctor Stone group. Mm-hmm. It's because one of the one of the guys I met there, he's gonna be shipping out to the Marines by the end of the um, by the end of the year. So I was like, oh okay, I guess I'm gonna have to save up for AX now in a Chrome cosplay. Yeah, they want to do something big for him probably. Mm-hmm. It's like oh, I always wanted to be in a group cosplay. It's like yeah. Good, you're helping American heroes. Oh, <laughs> uh, but yeah. And that was the first time I've actually felt my age for the first time because the guy I was speaking to, I thought he was in college, he was a high school senior. <laughs> and then he was asking, how about you? And I was like, dude, I was a high school senior since I, I was a high school senior like five years ago. Yeah. How does it feel? <laughs> you like making me feel like a goddamn boomer and now there you go. <laughs> Poetic justice! Poetic justice. Oh, it was funny, man. Because during the whole Seattle trip, one oh, of my shit. friends... I forgot you gave me this. Uh-huh. Very good. One of my friends is like 19. He's like, uh, he, he, was, uh, he barely turned 19 by the time the trip ended. It was funny because my friend would always... Whenever he turned on the radio and like, there was like some like um, pop music going on or anything, he, he would always like look at the back of my friends and be like, is this what the kids listen to nowadays? <laughs> yeah. Ooh, something we will also be talking about today. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. With, with what apparently he thinks of popular pop music. Yeah. <laughs> this shit's done by computers. There's no love behind it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> that was a good segue there. Yeah. Anyways, if you're wondering what we're going to be doing today, go for it, Danny. Yeah, we'll be talking about the Netflix... Um, well... It's on Netflix, but it's created by the legendary Shinichiro Watanabe. I'm so sorry. I know I got the last name, right? Shinichiro Watanabe. Yeah, kind of close there. I got the last name. I'm proud of that. Uh, But yeah, uh, Cowboy Bebop. uh, Oh, I have a cut in my hand. Oh, no. Um, Cowboy Bebop, uh, Space Dandy, Samurai Champloo. Uh, there's something else he did, I'm forgetting. I know he did Boys in the Slope. Yeah. <laughs> Kids on the Slope. Kids on the Slope. Oh! Um, Terror and Resonance. Yeah. Yeah. So this is him kind of going back to another one of his, this is something I want to do. I'm even setting it in my little world. Mm-hmm. And it is me basically flexing how much I love America. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because. Dude, the songs. Oh, the Even song- the episode titles, man. I didn't realize that. They were all song titles. I, I didn't notice the, like, like I thought, okay, generic titles, and then they show the record, but I didn't realize they were records with actual musicians. So the episode, Every Breath You Take, yep. it's like, Every Breath You Take, The Police. I'm like, oh, wait, shit, what? These are actual songs? And then there's one by YouTube. There's a David Bowie song title in yeah, there. Yeah, there's the, the one, um, I picked it up by episode three because the episode title for that one was, um, 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 video killed the radio star. I was like, I know that song. <laughs> you guys know video that. killed the radio star. Yeah. Pictures came and broke the heart. I was like, ah. Uh, another one that got me was Dancing Queen. So oh, this, yeah. yeah. This was after I figured it out. Uh, and I'm like, and I'm like, wait, the ABBA? Oh yeah, look, there's ABBA's on record. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we are talking about Carol and Tuesday, um, a show that came out, and I have some specific things to say about the way the show was looked at. Anyway, <laughs> let's get to it. Wait, is this the second? No, this is the first one, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go. 
That was funny because we were actually listening to the song as well in the road. Oh, this is one of the songs that pop up in the road trip. Yeah. Is there a legal place to listen to these? Spotify. Only Spotify? Damn. I want these, like, on my phone. And mind you, this isn't a cover, this is a Japanese opening. No songs in here are in Japanese. Nope. And the ones that are subtitled are Latin and Italian. <laughs> and the, the, that one where they get interesting with the three brothers? So. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I, I never, I forgot the name of that song. It's like, they're playing Galactic Mermaid. I'm like, what the hell? show is so wholesome. It is. It's just that sometimes it forgets that. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Yeah, but like um, but like in this first tap, they they have like you know they have like a spiteful fan. Yeah. But like the second half is flat out like oh, there's a crazy cyber fan <laughs> who tries to kill one of the characters. Oh mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we'll get to that one uh, later later. But yeah, th this show just goes places. Um, the, the second half is when things really heat up, but even this one kind of goes into like, wow, that is not Setting something. up everything in there as well. Yeah. And it's pretty much again, it's like, um, like, you know, like well, with Shinichiro Watanabe is on works and everything as well. A lot of the things, especially with Cowboy Bebop and everything, like um, Cowboy Bebop, especially Space Dandy, you expect all this ridiculousness, but then out of nowhere, boom, he hits you with like the seriousness. It's like, oh yeah, this is everybody's past. You know, people have like had tragedies here. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, there, there's a guy who was raised to become a trained killer, and there's an episode where he falls in love with a geisha worker, yep. and realizes he can't leave the life of violence behind. Yep. <laughs> um, freaking Cowboy Bebop, one of the characters was cryogenically frozen, and doesn't remember anything, and got, like, all of the money that was a part of her scooped away by a doctor who lied to her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 Hell Girl Place is terror and resonance. You have kids that were breeded in a facility that were trying to create geniuses. Yep. Oh, no, it's like, it's like the, the, um, the facility from, um, from um, Death Note. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the facility from Death Note if kids actually managed to escape from it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but um, he goes places. And Space Dandy, which is a show that I initially hated, that even had an episode where, like, a character dies and doesn't even realize it. Yeah. And that's, like, a completely different episode where the animation is different, the character designs are different, and it is a freaking gorgeous episode. Mm -hmm. And even after that, like, I started understanding what this show was doing and why I was the only one who hated it initially. And, yeah, he th this guy does things to the you know, uh, excuse the pun, but to the beat of his own drum. Yep. And he doesn't care if it, you know, if it doesn't get picked up, like Cowboy Bebop, um, you know, keep, uh, keep Cowboy Bebop infinite, uh, infinite, infamously got cancelled midway through and was played out of order and initially had, like, the rest of the episodes played, like, a year later. Yep. Um, Samurai Champloo was a little bit easier to take in, but then that had... But then a lot of people didn't really understand, like, the hip-hop aspect yep. and how uh, political it was getting with its uh, trade talk and all that. Yep. NAFTA and everything. Yeah. Um, and this one, too, is flat out like, yeah, we're going to talk about these two girls who want to become singers, but the girls are black and white. There's not a main Japanese character in here at nope. all. Um, all the music is in American English. American pop. Yeah, uh, American pop, and you'll have you have one guy rapping in Latin and another girl who's singing in French or Italian. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, what, I think what, it was Italian. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was the crazy girl Sybil. Yep. <laughs> um, Even that Sybil as well. All these different names and everything is like it's just throwing like these little references as well. Yeah, and, and the interesting thing too is a lot of the people in here they're very. All of them are like overseas uh, actors. Uh, they're overseas musicians who are famous in their own respective countries. 
Mm -hmm. Um, The only one I recognize that I think a few people would know is a DJ. And I think he did some of the music. Skrillex. Yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, sadly, no. Uh, if anything, he did the dubstep Grammy music. Yeah. Uh, but no, uh, this one guy called Steve. Um, I wish Ben was here. But it was like Steve Aoki. Yes. Yeah. 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 Who does some of? The, he had to have done one of the beats for Erdogan. Yeah. Because Erdogan's the only one that doesn't have a set musician listed under his cast. Yeah. And when you look at some of the music he does, um, it's different composers. Yeah. So like Erdogan, Erdogan literally is just like a different collection of EDM artists going into one character. Yep. <laughs> Uh, and then I think one of my favorite ones is whoever is doing that black guy. I forget his name. Uh, God, he's such a cool character. Uh, he was that guy McCullough in Tuesday hide in his uh, trailer. Oh, uh, ah, you know what you're talking about. Yeah, but but he was the one. His name. Yeah, he was the one who had a a past relationship with Crystal, and he sings like this beautiful smooth jams R and B type music. Yeah, uh, very. Was he does. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's Gus, right? Yeah. He just appears on like... I think it's Gus. Yeah, yeah it's Gus, it's Gus. Are you sure Gus isn't the name oh, of the... No, no, he's the one that signs them to, um, for Mars Brightest. Yeah. Ah. Uh, okay, we lost the one. Because which episode uh, does he come out in? Uh, let, let me check Netflix. It was the one where they play that music festival. Bro, oh, he's like... Oh. Uh, Single charts. Oh wait, no, this is part two. Yeah. Go back to part one, please. Uh, so, sorry guys, a video killed the radio star. Every breath you take, no. Life is a carnival. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was the one with uh, Yoshua. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, I see now. Yeah. Oh, uh, but... But he has a very, um, I will even occasionally put up, play a, some of the music in here too. Because it's a bomb. Yeah. Oh my god. Like, the, the opening on its own, the opening is a song that you hear in the show, but like, the ending theme is really catchy, mm-hmm. and uh, I think one of my favorite parts uh, was, uh, we'll, we'll get to the overall plot in a bit. But one of my favorite parts was when they were making that one song in the laundry mat. Oh yeah! And they get that one guy in the middle to start like tapping along to the beat of it. Oh yeah, like the one, it was like the, um, the round and round, the round and round one. Yeah, yeah, where it's like round and round, like dancing laundry. Yeah. Um, Kellen Tuesday. I saw that b- because I was looking up the dubstep granny thing. Oh. <laughs> uh, you guys will hear that in a bit. But yeah, um, that popped up in a, that popped up in my like recommendation so I know it's on YouTube yeah uh but also I didn't realize but he shows up again later (laughs) and I'm like oh that's fine Yeah, but it's just stereo now. Yeah, look at that guy in the middle. Yeah. It's like, it's like getting into it. Well, I had a weird Mandela effect. I had a weird Mandela effect where I'm like, I could have sworn there was another guy who showed up in that scene and started dancing behind them, but I think I just like got got something wrong. Yeah, he probably just crossed them to uh, probably got confused two scenes together. Yeah. And that's the thing as well. The animation is just so crisp. Right. Yeah. It, uh, what is it? It's a lot. It's on the level of a lot of sports anime where the animation is good in like the normal parts. Yeah. And then it just spikes where it needs to spike. Yep. Play that much? Yes. Yeah, it's just like, <laughs> it just I don't want to stop 
stop it. I just don't want to. Oh no! Oh, I'm just glad I'm, I'm approaching. I'm approaching that level of pitch perfect. I was like one, two, three, yeah, one, two, yeah, one, two, three, one, two. We'll have our own. <laughs> we'll have our own dub, Carolyn Tuesday story. Oh, uh, no. Except we'll be the weird people that popped up in Mars Valley. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all, the, all, the, all the joke ones that show up. All the really weird joke ones. Uh, we'll be the heavy metal brothers. Oh, yeah, there you go. Oh, I'm not the one going deaf. And then. <laughs> oh, that was such a good part right there. <laughs> oh, so many great parts. Um, Oh, no. But yeah, so the this well, yeah, let's get into the plot. So the show opens up on Mars, uh, which the planet. Yeah, which what was it like fifty years or so we got colonized. Yeah, and Elon Musk. <laughs> yes, Elon. Elon, Elon did Musk. it. He yeah. did it, boys. He did it. Uh, did did you watch the Rick and Morty where they actually got him in an episode? Yeah, it was like Elon Tusk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I like that. Yeah, it, man, it's a good morning. It's expected. They had an entire episode where they were slut shaming dragons. <laughs> oh, yeah! yeah. 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 You <laughs> slut! You, well, dude, calm down. You slut dragon! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, uh, it opens up where Mars got colonized. And again, it's argued that this is the same world as Cowboy Bebop. Um, where it's taking place in a city called Alba City, which is like. Basically, Mars's version of LA, mm -hmm. or California at best. Um, it's a popular city, pretty much, is what they're trying to get to you. Yeah, where a lot of, um, you know, where a lot of the mu you know, literal term, a lot of the music happens when people mm -hmm. get um, discovered and all that. It's kind of like, it's kind of like when um, um, Harlem, when, uh, when they um, were like, oh, you got a bunch of like, new, new like, black artists and everything, and like, I start producing different kinds of music, especially like the jazz movements and everything. Yeah, and you have, I think they open up with. Tuesday, no Carol first, right? Yeah, because Carol was the one who was uh, who was trying to run away to you know become a musician and. Then oh my bad, uh, Tuesday. Was it Tuesday? Because Tuesday was the Tuesday got from was when she got fired from her job. No, I think it's Tuesday. No, Tuesday is the girl who ran away. In oh Carol. yeah. Yeah, because I know that whole thing where it's like, oh, were you born on a Tuesday? Oh, and yeah. it's like I don't know, and it's like, were you born on Christmas? And it's like, yeah. I don't have a family, I don't know, so it's like, oh, okay, yeah, so, uh, we got the names mixed up. I did, well, I did, at least. Yeah, um, no, but that's the thing, I was going with it, too, I'm like, wait, I just saw the show today, what the fuck? <laughs> um, but, but it's like, yeah, so, we see Tuesday, who is a blonde, uh, a blonde, freckled young girl, who you could straight out tell by the house she's escaping from, and the way she's just, that she's very, she very much comes from money. Yep. Um, she's escaping and, you know, riding the tram race and eventually going to Alba City. Where, yeah, her whole dream is I want to run off and be a musician, but a lot of runaways is running away was the easy part. Now it's, what am I going to do from this point? Yep, that's the hard part. And then you see um, another, a focus on another girl called Carol, who is initially opens up as a street bat. Yep. And she's, like, talking about, yeah, this city, a lot of people want to make it, and, but, you know, occasionally there will be crime here and there. And yeah, she stops a kid from stealing an apple, which, in a very little throwaway scene, you see him again, and he looks way better off than he Oh, yeah? Really? Yeah. yeah, there's a part where she just randomly high-fives a person and says hi to a person. That apparently was the same kid. Oh, shit, really? Yeah. I don't recognize him. I, I didn't. It, it was one of those, like, white shot scenes, so uh, I'm like, wait a minute, that kid looks familiar. <laughs> Uh, same thing with a uh, you know you still tapping to the song. <laughs> <laughs> it's in my head. Okay. Um, you know there's that whole thing where they're like oh maybe instead of commenting we should do like a cold handshake like those rappers do and then the same guy from the laundry mat comes out and he's like oh come on this is just sad and then he teaches them how to do the handshake. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like wait what? I didn't realize that the first time. That's the same guy from the laundry mat. The dap and everything. Yeah. Yeah, where it's like, okay, so it's like this, and then, uh, and then, uh, and I'm like, uh, I still can't, I still can't get those down. I always end up hitting someone. It's like, uh, 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 and, uh. Yeah. See? I'm such a freaking, I have a goldfish brain. But, you know, her whole thing is, she's working at a diner, which, yeah, you know, this might be LA. Yeah. <laughs> 
she's getting like creepily hit. She has like people who act entitled and they're like, oh, my coffee is bitter. Do something about it. It's like, dude, it's coffee. You can put all the sugar you want in it. It's so bitter. <laughs> uh, but then there's that whole thing where it's like, yes, yeah, I want a cheeseburger. And then a side of you. This isn't that kind of restaurant, sir. That's ugly girl talk. <laughs> I love that scene. I'm like, ah. Oh. She ends up getting... What was it? She put like a bunch of mustard on the burger. Yeah, because it was like because the mustard has like a little bit of a stronger taste. Yeah, so she just literally covered that in the burger to the point where it just looked like melted cheese. Mm. But Maybe uh, that was the point. Yeah, <laughs> try to finesse it. <laughs> yeah, here's a oozy cheeseburger. It's like holy crap! This is <laughs> this this was actually just mustard, and she got fired, which is kind of a common thing that happens in the show. No, yeah. Because, like, one of the things about her is, like, you know, again, her personality and everything. She's, like, the kind of person to, like, let people push her around and everything. Mm -hmm. Which I can agree with. Because, holy hell, some customers can be put under place. Oh, dude, you would not take anyone's shit in, um... You, you want to... If you want your kids to be tough-ass nails when they grow up, have them look at a Goodwill for a couple of years. That one, if they are meek, that job will make them stand up for themselves because there's so many people... Like, oh, sorry, so I can't take that. Excuse me? I said we can't take your damn baby shit. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm uh, uh, sorry. He's like, yeah, I'll teach you not to step up to people. Um, no, yeah. It's like, a, it's like, again, it's one of those things that you pretty much look like, um, it's like the city just shaping you up and everything as well. And yeah. Like you mentioned, a lot of these things as well, like, you know, a lot of people try to go there and making it like that perfectly describes Broadway, New York, Los Angeles. All these different cities, like people like always see on TV saying like, yeah, this is where all the, like the artists and everything, all the actors, the movie stars go to. If you make it, if you can go there, you have a chance of making it. Yeah, you make it here, you make it anywhere. Yep. Um, and the, the whole thing too with uh, Tuesday, with Kel is, Kel had a very tough background, so mm -hmm. she can definitely handle herself. Uh, we'll go more into that uh, when we get to more spiders. Yeah. And then Carol, you know, she shows up in the city, doesn't really know where to go. Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday, she shows up in the city, doesn't really know where to go. And god damn it. I hate those verbal callers that just won't stop. Um, I saw a hint about that. I'll, I'll get more into that after the show. Wait, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So it's like... You know, she walks in and she immediately gives off that, hello, oh, this is a new environment for me. <laughs> and then immediately gets her stuff stolen. Yep. <laughs> um, which, again, when you... If, when you say that, that, makes, that just makes me sound like more like New York, if anything, because it always happens a lot there because it's such a crowded place. New York, yeah, New York, yeah. Man, there was someone I ran into during Country World Expo where they're like... Uh, where well, well, I asked them how they enjoy the con, they're like, yeah, you know, despite getting like two days worth of my clothes stolen, uh, it's pretty good. I'm like, what happened? They're like, yeah, I came out of the airport and made the mistake of chesting someone and then boom, half of my stuff is stolen. Luckily, it was two days worth of clothes and nothing else. All my important stuff was with me. But I'm like, damn. damn. Yeah, I'm like, damn. That's really bad, but yeah, you know, be careful with that runaway children, or, you know, just don't fucking run away and be thankful for what you have, unless your mom is basically the ver of this world's version of Donald Trump. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, oh my yeah. god. That was, <laughs> That's in the, so true. <laughs> yeah, in the second half, it's like, oh, come on, I had enough of this shit already, I don't, I don't want this in my anime. That was one of the things I hated about Inu Yashiki's manga because I was flat out like Donald Trump. Oh, the president! <laughs> yeah, the president's Donald The manga flat out says Donald Trump. The anime just used his face but didn't say who it was. I just said the president of the United States. Yeah, the manga's flat out like, oh, it's Donald Trump. And they got the face down and everything. I'm like, keep goddamn everyday politics away from my anime, please. Um... I still remember when Obama got mentioned in high school, in the lives of high school boys. Yeah. And they were like, foreign presidents, it's like, Obama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, they, so, um, what if, what, if there's one thing that Carol does enjoy doing every day after a hard day of work is going to the bridge and playing her awesome fold-out piano. Yeah, the little, uh, the little back one. Yeah, and she just plays it, not really because she wants attention but she just likes the feeling that maybe people are listening to it maybe not 
but it's it, kind of like kind of like a self gratifying thing that like oh maybe someone's out there enjoying my beats and everything. Yeah, and he starts playing a song that will eventually go on to be "Loneliest Girl," which is one of my favorite beats in the show. Um, and right there, and literally by this point, it's just a couple of melodies and a you know some humming yep. with a word thrown in every every once in a while and then she just sees uh tuesday standing around in front of her crying yeah uh because she got touched by the melody and they end up having to run away because the you know they were loitering in an area that did not allow that yeah it's like no loitering around dude it's pretty much just like streets and everything because there's always like no loitering no standing around no no part no, like if you're on you know, business only hours and everything god damn mm-hmm and the thing is, I feel the reason why the bridge was shut down like that is that was more of a, it's your safety rather than other people's because you're right by a major highway. Yep. If something happens, you could get hit. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that was something I understood. Oops. Yeah. I got you. I got I got sticky hands. But, yeah, it's... They go, and one of the things I really liked that this show immediately tells you is these girls are basically two... They're, they're basically each other's, like, missing pieces to yeah. the puzzle. Well, Tuesday is really good at forming melody. No, Kel's really good at forming melodies, but and Tuesday it focuses on lyrics. Yep. So when they meet together and she sees that Tuesday plays a guitar... And as Kel saw, um, uh, no, sorry, as Tuesday saw, Kel's really good at the piano. Mm -hmm. They realized that, um, like, oh, shoot, you, the song you were doing was beautiful. We should try to make melody, you know, we should try to put lyrics to it. Uh, because you said you're not very good at lyrics. I have an entire book just scribbled with mad ramblings of an artist. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, just because like oh yeah, and like that's one. So that's literally how you got get music started and everything. You start with the beat and everything. You just try to kind of go like pretty much everything was like. start kind of coming up with the songs as well and that's pretty much how music gets made nowadays as well like you have to have a lyricist you have to have somebody who comes up with the beat and everything what's um how to play it and everything where to put everything as well because a <laughs> funny thing i learned about um no funny thing i learned about music when i was in a music appreciation class most modern day music goes to like the beat of just four so it's like one two three four one two three four, yeah one two so that's literally like the basic beat you can start right there and then from you, you, you decide, like, do you want to make it, like, a 4-beat, four 8-beat? Four do you just want to, like, um, have different things? Like, Michael Jackson's like, Not you, because I am the one, two, three. the jam is not my song. Yeah. Uh, but they do, um... Sorry, I was gathering and then putting my phone on low power mode. Uh, but what were we saying? Oh, right, right. I was actually bringing up a scene. Yeah. Yeah, uh, this scene is probably the first part where they actually saw it, like, their first jam session as it's listed. Yeah. But as they see, it's... As you're seeing here, basically Kel's leading it, and then you have Tuesday trying to find the right melody to go with it. Which, as you see, it's very out of sync right now. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think this was like... This is the ending of the first episode, I think. Yeah. I don't want to know it. Yeah. Her <laughs> AI. Four, four counts. Yeah. One and two and 
two, and four. something I didn't pay, notice the first two times, but this is a song that Tuesday had already had written in a book. Yep. So it's one of those cases where she had the lyrics, but she didn't have the melody, and then she meets this girl, and they found like the perfect melody for it. Yep. And yeah, that was, that was like the first part they ever combined the music together, and that is the moment that it, that I was told, this is going to be something different. Yep. Yeah, this is something I haven't seen other animes do. I've seen a couple of musical animes, and a lot of them are like the basic alternative rock group, or like uh, Sympathy... Uh, symphony, symphonies. Symphonies. Like, um, um, <laughs> like, like, um, like Your Lie in April? Yes, yeah, well, Your Lie in April was all about, um, like, classical music competitions, mm -hmm. and, you know, not playing towards the man, so, point of it. Yeah. A very beautiful story that Ben still likes to fuck with me about. <laughs> <laughs> Did, remember when that meme, when that meme was going around, was like, thank you for giving me, like, tearful moments? Yeah. And then it would have all these people, and in the middle it would be like, not you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he found one and was like, thank you for giving me tearful moments, and it's all these sad anime characters who died and made you cry. And in the middle it was the girl from, <laughs> from Your Lion Abel, and it said, not you. I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> she needs to, God, she, keep, uh, she, she got to, like, no, keep up. Ah, I already forgot that. The Don't movie. explode on me. <laughs> I need you for the rest of this. Don't explode. She got to like Kimi no Uso. There you go. Damn, I don't even know that name at all. <laughs> I don't even know that name. Because oh. April is the fourth month, so she got to. So, um, you know, uh, uh, I already forgot how to say months, but yeah, she got to. Yeah, she, yeah. She, he, he still fucks with me about that, and I'm like, screw you. That was a sad anime. <laughs> Uh, which we did cover before. I'm going to be doing something probably, hopefully by May, I'll be doing something about the backlog that is just gone. No. Oh. I, f I found a better, I found a better site that, that's free, that will not charge me for putting stuff on it, that I think I'm going to put a lot of the backlog uh, episodes from 2017 on right up there. Oh, all right. Yeah. Uh, because, man, there's a lot of good stuff we did up there. Um, a lot of stuff that I actually want to bring back, especially for Isekai Man. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, uh, we'll be doing something about that. But how about you take it over from here? So, yeah. So, pretty much after that scene and everything as well, that's pretty much where, um, where they had their jam session and everything. They're trying to pretty much now look for their first break. You know, somebody can, like, not, well... Not just kind of like get them right off the recorder or anything, but just kind of get their names out there and everything. Yeah. Just kind of like in the streets over here, like one of the things that you need is when you form a group is you need somebody to kind of get your name out there, like either sign you up for competition or willing to sponsor you yeah. or even mentor you or host you as well. And so <clears throat> this was the uh, second episode, what was it? Uh, the second episode is where they go to the concert hall to test the acoustics of the song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they use that piano and it turned out that Roddy who is a AI music composer. Basically, he, in this world, there are two kinds of musicians. There is the very popular music that is created by AIs, specifically yeah. for the singers. Um, kind of uh, a little commentary on how commercialized pop singing and mainstream music is. That's literally how Swedish music is made. It's made using science. Yeah, and we've even had like a couple of movie trailers that were like edited by AIs. Yes. Um, like that movie Morgan, there's an AI trailer for that. Um, but there's also, um, what do you call it? Sorry. Uh, there's also the very little dying breed, and the show's really telling you that Kelvin and Tuesday are probably the only ones doing this. Uh, uh, there's still the people who are writing their own music and uh, putting it out there. Uh, Crystal might be the other person that they mentioned wrote a song for another band and all that. Yeah, so it's one of those things where you just have like these two, uh, pretty much these two eras of compo composition going. You've got the new era with the AIs and everything, well, everything done by machines and everything as well. And then you've kind of got like, uh, kind of like how you got now, like, um, pretty much 
the um, the more human made stuff. Yeah. Which again, every era is gonna have its it's gonna have its conflicts because even now you have like people who's like oh against like yeah old school rap is the shit but now it's just all the same thing and everything. Yeah, well, old school rap is trying to say stuff. New school raps are like I got money and you don't. Duh. <laughs> yeah, it's but more like not all like that. No. Nah. Yeah. It's just more, it's like, it's just a little more of a different tone. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's it's all the time period, which is like, like, Kill and Tuesday touches on that. Again, mm -hmm. can't get to it yet. But like, the second half is flat out like, oh shit, this is things that are happening in the 90s. And was even happening a little bit now. Yep. Uh, because, you know, when Trump got elected, there was a couple of artists that went against the gray and got like, very, very much beaten down for it. Yeah. Uh, Eminem was one who went against him, and people were like, fuck him, he's not a white guy anymore. It's all like, yeah, no one cares. <laughs> um, he said what he had to say, and we love him for it. But, um, and, and then pretty much like in this one, when they were playing in the concert hall, now um, that's when like the very goes viral, right? Yeah, yeah, because Roddy, uh, Roddy was just working, he was doing something with, for other guns. Yeah. Who is this very pompous, kind of flat out stupid um, DJ, uh, like EDM artist, which a lot of his his music freaking bops though. A lot of his music's really good because it's very larger than life, like he is. Yeah. Um, even though it's also composed by AIs, but again, yeah. it's an AI looking at his personality and picking music that will go with it. And Roddy's like, "Oh look, those girls are really cute," and then he starts hearing them play a little bit, so he like opens up his phone. They get chased out by security because they weren't supposed to be there, mm -hmm. and then he uploads it on. Um, he uploads it on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. He he uploads it. It goes viral, and a character we didn't mention because he only has one scene in the first episode. But this this is, this is what Gus gets into, is right? Yeah. This is this is what Gus has like a like like a a bigger role because in the first episode he was a a drunkard who was in a bar like um, I think like across the street from them. Yeah. Um, he, he was like in a bar and he'd always be like, turn off this fucking music because modern music today is not good, blah, blah, blah. And he's like in a junkin super again and he hears the music and he tells this couple like, Hey, turn it off. And it's like, wait, wait a minute. He lo looks at it and it's like, wait, they're actually pretty good. So he finds out, wait, Roddy, oh, I know him. So he calls him up. Oh, yeah, he's trying to check that. That's when he's trying to check on the girls because he wants to figure out who's, um, who's, behind, the, who's behind it. Yeah, <laughs> which I love that part because <laughs> fly out. Um, they don't do this anymore because of all the dangerous stuff going on. But yeah, they flat out find the address to the house because they didn't take off location tracking. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, Instagram location tracking isn't that um, isn't that detailed anymore because of stuff like this. Yep, <laughs> people being able to track you down and then look for you and everything. Yeah, uh, I remember Degrassi had an episode about that where a character got robbed. Oh! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was flat out like someone broke in her house with a gun. Um, oh, yeah, 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 I know what you're talking about. Yeah, see, everyone knows about good trash television. <laughs> oh, it got cancelled, that's so sad. It got cancelled like two years ago, I'm like, I still haven't gotten over it. Um, but... Yeah, I love that point because they're just kind of relaxing in their house and then someone starts banging on the door and and it's like, yes, who is it? I finally found you. And he starts trying to pry the door open. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, oh, who the hell is this? He opens up the door and he's like, have no fear, girls, because from this point on, I will be your manager. No, yeah. And that's the thing about Gus as well is because like the reason, um, cause, like one reason why he's a drunkard and I think like in the past he was actually like, you know, he was like, Somebody was like actually a golden guy and everything as well. Yeah, yeah he was considered like, um, he compared himself to the Beatles manager. Yep. <laughs> you know, it's all like, the Beatles wouldn't be who they were if it wasn't for this guy. Who's that guy? <laughs> but like, one of the big names that the two girls did recognize was he was the person who discovered a artist uh, called Flora. Yep. Who, yeah, when they when she finally enters this series, she's kind of this world's version of Mariah Carey. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um... Oh, yeah, with the voice. Yeah, and she... Again, we can't talk about it yet, but man, that episode was a downer. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he's famous for that, and he claims he was a part of these other groups. But it was all like, yeah, they got famous, but then they were doomed. They got famous, and then they were doomed. I had a relationship with this guy, but we like, can't really talk to him now. But, yeah. yeah. I could still use him to hook you guys up. <laughs> but... Yeah, he, he's a very, 
he immediately comes off as this big, lovable dude. Oh, yeah. Um, who, you know, he's a cheapskate because there's that whole thing where he tells him, like, oh, um, he tries to soften them up because they're so mad about the home invasion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, he tries to soften them up at the lunch, and he even uses the words, it's on me. And then at the end, he's like, hey, aren't you going to chip in? And it's like, I thought you said this is on you. When did I ever say that? <laughs> I'm like, oh, Gus. Oh, there you go. You need your own sitcom music every time you do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, the oh, fuck, what's it called? That's that um, the wall. The wall like, dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Uh, I think that's Seinfeld. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or freaking um, Family Guy, where it's like, no one else but Quagmire. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's Quagmire. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, he... He is the one who almost immediately, you could tell he's not someone who's full of shit because he knows exactly what they have to do. I forget what was one of the first moves he made. Because um, this is what, pretty much like the episode was after that was when they made the launch, was, was it the laundromat pretty much when yeah. they made that song? Yeah. Because um, I know I know after that, like one of the things he wants to do is try to um, try to get them um, viral pretty much so they can get noticed. Yeah. Um, one of his first things is he wanted to expose them to another big artist. Yeah. Um, so he has Roddy pull strings and have them meet Erdogan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but again, as mentioned before, Erdogan's a very pompous, full of himself guy. He He's one of those people who believes like, I am music and music is me. Oh, and God, he, so he's basically Kanye West. Yeah, he's basically Kanye West. Um, and when they go meet, uh, when they go meet him, which he only wanted to meet the two girls, he just met them to tell him, like, yeah, I, I read your notes, and I think it's terrible. I don't think you go, I don't think you girls are ever going to be anything. I don't think this music's ever going to catch on. And, you know, just being a really pompous idiot with him. And something, <laughs> something went off with Tuesday, when Tuesday just, like, lit the notes on fire, threw it in the house, basically causing the house to get hosed down with yeah. the sprinkler system. And they end up running off and telling him, yeah, he's an idiot, he doesn't know anything. And that kind of sets up this really funny thing throughout the series where, like, just the ve- just the very idea of thinking about those girls again just pisses Erdogan off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, in the next episode, Gus is like, well, I guess what we have to do now, since the whole Erdogan thing didn't go off well... Uh, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to make a viral music video, and yeah, that goes as good as you probably expected. Oh yeah, because um, one of the things about um, making something viral and everything as well is like it's gotta have something that's like uh, pretty much everybody finds again catching um catching common. Yeah, and like it's really hard because a lot of these videos can either be hit or misses as well. Cause like, mm, what's a good example of this? Because, uh, uh Rickworld, know. being Rickworld. Oh, okay. How, because I'm trying to think of, like, videos that went viral all of a sudden. Gangnam Style, that, that one was just, like, was a one-hit wonder when it came out. Yeah, Gangnam Style, Numa Numa, mm-hmm. uh, Chocolate Rain is, like... Yeah, famous. Chocolate Rain! We me and my coworkers were talking about that. You know the guy who makes Chocolate Rain? Yeah. Apparently he was shopping there um, 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 this weekend. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I think he's one of the few people who lives in L.A. Yeah, yeah. apparently one of my... And it's funny because they did they didn't know until one of my friends in the back room actually heard his voice like, wait, is that the guy who did Chocolate Rain? Yeah, th- that voice, that video's not him singing, that's him talking. Yeah. Because when you hear him talk, it's like, he's still holding that same melody. Exactly. And it's like, you're not singing, you were just talking in that video, and it was great. Yep. Uh, but, but yeah, that's, um, I think it was the old location or the new location you guys are at. Someone, um... Uh, my friend Oscar, he's he was there, and one of his coworkers saw Pro's ED. Yeah. Oh y- yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was like a big thing over there. We're like, oh my god, Pro's ED is here. <laughs> um, Pro's ED, hit up the podcast, please. I love you. Um, but yeah, um, no one really knows what takes a video to go viral. Sometimes it's just it's so good that it's. You know. And sometimes it takes, yeah, sometimes it's good that it's memorable, or sometimes it just takes years to catch on, because like a video that wasn't viral before, all of a sudden, because like of a meme, or a reference, or a- literally anything, can just make it go viral overnight. Yeah, did you ever see, did you hear about that video that was scaring people called, Hey Walter? I, or I think it's me, Walter, I forget, it's like, a na- it's like, hey, name, it's me, Walter. 
and it's a guy talking about like, oh, I met this girl at a at a clothing store, and there's just something that we met, and we just immediately clicked. Let me show you my girlfriend, and it's just a a shot of a basement. He opens it up, and it's a girl screaming, and he goes in there, and you just hear her screaming, and the video cuts off. Um, I'll show you the video. Oh, but no, it, I think I've seen it. Yeah, but it, it was a thing that um that it had come out four years. I think it went viral in twenty two thousand and eight, and it came out in twenty fourteen. And when it went viral that year, people were like, "Oh my god, what the fuck is this? Oh man, is this actually related to an actual kidnapping?" Because the girl in the video was like, you looked like a person who went missing around that time. Oh shit! And no, it was just a guy doing a comedy skit, and they had to take the video down because it's uh, a little controversial. Yeah. Yeah, very controversial. Let me see. Man. Oh, wait. It actually told me what it was. Okay, hold on. Uh, Breaking Bad. Hi, Walter. It's me, Patrick. Video. Uh, let me see this. I was at the mall today, and guess what happened? I met the most wonderful girl. We went shopping at JCPenney's, and she tried on a lot of clothes. And she ended up buying a whole lot of them, you know what I mean? And then we decided to go and take a look at some of the jewelry at K Jewelers. And she picked out this most awesome necklace, that, the most amazing necklace I've ever seen. And I, I know she wanted me to buy it for her because she kept on looking at me and kept on giving me that look. You know the look. And then we got kind of tired in the mall and I brought her back to my place. And I know, I know she hates cameras, Walter, but I'm going to show you her anyway. You ready? Yeah, here we go. And that was it. Holy shit. Yeah, so this... Oh, oh dang. <laughs> yeah, so they believe that the video was connected to this woman called Kayla Berg, who went missing around the time this video was made. <laughs> and it freaked everyone else out. The police had to get involved, and the guys, you know, they told them exactly what the video was. And yeah, they were just some skit comedy group um, on YouTube. And they even went on to even show them who the actual girl was in the video, and yeah, it wasn't Kayla Berg. But yeah, it was one of those cases where it was something that sat for a very long time, you know, went viral and created this massive hysteria going yep. on. Uh, but yeah, in this case though, I feel the video would have gone viral just because of how bad in quality it was. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's so meme-worthy. Yeah, and that's the thing as well, because like, one of the best things I mean, I am. What it, like, what the advent of like nowadays like what makes it easier well is this is the thing that I actually like about the modern age mm -hmm. uh, even though a lot of people you know, can't kind of give a crap when it comes to like music and everything but a lot of the good thing especially about the modern age right now is the advent of social media and everything it makes it so much easier to like just expose yourself more because yeah like again you get that one person that's like an influencer they hear your stuff they like it they can share it to a lot of people and then people will start picking up on that as well yeah so that's literally one of the keys where it's like, hey, even if it's bad quality or anything, if it's something that like, you know, people are like, hey, I like this, like this kind of seems like either a meme or you know, even though it's bad quality, I still like it or anything. Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah. And, and then you have videos that start off as, oh my God, this is bad. And then now people look at it and it's good. Like one video that people were like, oh my God, this video is so bad was what does the fox say? Yep. And now it's like, yeah, you know, the song's not that bad. It's stupid, but it's not that bad. And I'm like, yeah, I was telling you guys that from the very beginning. I like that song. Oh, my God, man. And then let's not forget about the YouTube algorithms. Oh, uh, yeah. Bringing back, bringing up. Dude, it's funny because lately, all, all that's been popping up on my algorithms is pretty much just like um, well, war footage just from Iraq. You know, like CRAMs have taken down like um, missiles that have been launched. They're like... Is YouTube trying to tell me something? Is YouTube trying to prepare me for the war? Yeah, World War Three people, it's trending all over YouTube. Yep. Um, but yeah, so what ends up happening though, they realized, oh, well, we're gonna need an AI to help us. Um, uh, we need an AI to help us. So they buy this AI and it's like, they had an idea of what they wanted to do. And a lot of it went from really weird ideas to just ripping off of the music videos. Yeah. Like Tuesday was flat out very apparent that all of the music videos she wanted to rip off was Michael Jackson with, oh, how about we get chased by zombies and then we start dancing with them. 
Uh, what about and, and then um, you could tell Tuesday was very set on like rom- romantic aspects of yeah. music videos and stuff. Trying to get a little bit more of emotional emotional appeal to there. Yeah, and then Roddy wanted like anime and Jackson yeah. <laughs> and there's even a little reference to the to take on me by uh huh. Yeah, but it's like you go into a mirror and you get turned into anime, and it's like yeah, that's uh, that's aha uh-huh right there. Yeah, when they when they went to the comic book world, <laughs> it technically makes aha uh-huh an isekai. Yeah. Yep. Yep, uh huh, it's an isekai. Top pick on me was an isekai in the music video. <laughs> yep, uh, also Captain N is an isekai. That's something people forget about too. But yeah, it, it's funny since isekai became such a big thing now, people are like, you do realize this makes this an isekai. And it's like, yeah. I know everything. It's like, like looking at everything I'll retro, um, retroactively, just says, so like, yeah, this technically was an isekai. Yeah, I, I like when Drifters first came out on Wikipedia, it was just like fantasy adventure. And then now it's like fantasy adventure isekai <laughs> because it's, you know, it's yeah, isekai. It is pretty much. The guy died and he got reincarnated in another world. As yeah. A, as a victor. Yeah, yeah Final Fa- um, Square Enix made a Final Fantasy original, um, an original story Final Fantasy manga. And guess what it is? It's isekai. a goddamn isekai with shotkun and everything. Oh no! Yeah, but two siblings get hit by shotkun and then oh. they get sent to a world that... It looks like Final Fantasy, but isn't quite Final Fantasy. Um, like all the uber powerful spells are fairy tales, like no rays or phoenix down, all of that oh. is a fake. Um, but you know, some features exist, like cat doors are there, the bomb ones are there. Uh, but yeah. Alright, I'm behind that. Yeah, it, it, it's a it's an interesting manga. I think the art kind of suffers from having a little too much on screen. It's a little hard to look at sometimes. Uh. But yeah, it's good so far. I'm really liking it. But yeah, so the the robot tell the robot's looking at all these crazy ideas, and it's like, okay, I can do all of that, and it gives them this ridiculous amount. Like we need a master animator. We need 120 dancers. We need a master makeup artist. We need this. We need a convertible. And, oh shit! Yeah. And they try their best to get all of that, and it goes from like Gus, um, even calling his ex wife to who is a makeup artist to help the girls. Um, it goes from. Oh, we can't, we don't know how we're going to get the giant robots, so we're going to have Roddy give them two robots that, the collector, the collector's edition, but when you look at his room, he has so many that are already open, and it's like, why are you going to give him the two collector's editions in your room? This is all on you. What happened to them was all on you. Yeah. <laughs> um, but... My, I think my favorite one was how they got the convertible. Oh, yeah! But <laughs> <laughs> once again, it was Roddy pulling his Ernagun strings. And I love that whole thing where it's like, why do you need the car for it? It's like, it's for a music video. Tell me this isn't about the... This isn't for those two girls from last week. It's like, no, no, it's not. It's like, okay, fine. Oh, yeah. The very idea of thinking about them makes me so mad. <laughs> but, um, yeah, they go and... It is a disaster where it's like, oh, we can't get 120 dancers, so you have to dance 120 times and we'll superimpose you. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Dude, and that's, that's, the, that's the thing about it. It's like when you throw that, uh, that's the thing that makes this a little bit funnier as well, where it shows you like the pros and cons of like an AI. It's like, yeah, an AI can help you out and everything, but remember, it's a computer. It can handle all those ideas. And just like a meme machine, when you throw that many ideas at once, it's going to spit out something that's like kind of like an unholy, like, Unholy birth child or something like that. Yeah, but there was another problem with that AI though. Um, the fact that some of, not all, but some of the AIs in these in this world are, they they are very human esque. So the problem with this is the a one of the things on the AI's list was beer. Oh. And it, and it claimed, oh, I need beer because it's biofuel and. That's the one I work with the most. Basically, Bender from Futurama. <laughs> but. When the final product happens, Roddy finds out, oh wait, there's there's this band of rogue AI running around scamming people into thinking they're like master directors and just horrifically scamming them and like leeching off them. So that's what was going on with them because when the final video comes out, it's a mess. It's shot out of place. They didn't cut scenes out. Like there's a part where they crush Erdogan's car oh, and yeah. you still see like Roddy running out in the distance or like just a random shot of Roddy crying and she's constructing oh, yeah. like, like After the robot, what happened to the collectibles? Yeah. Um, but, um... 
two kids like to work, it's all like, man, uh, who the hell is this kid here? Like, it's a very horribly put together thing, and in the end, it's just like, oh, this this was like some crazy AI scam artist that leaked off us and waste like, I think it was like 90 foot long or something, it was yeah. a lot. Uh, but you, they end up having to send it back. And I think the next one, because this would make it episode five? Yes! Okay, you're right. Um, I should just have that page open. So episode, yeah, episode five. So in this one, this is a very smaller episode. Mm -hmm. But this one, Gus is like, okay, well that didn't work. So let's go ahead and go for just trying to get you guys a gig. Yep. But where Gus shot maybe a little too high into the clouds, because Gus has a friend who was a... He was basically the organizer for events. Yeah. And he's like, hey, I have these two girls. There's something special, um, but I... But, you know, so do you think you can just give them a little look on the rookie stage? One song, if if you can. But the thing that's true with the music business is if you're... There's a difference between rookies and amateurs. Yep. Rookies are people who just started. They have a name to them, but they haven't done a lot. Amateurs are people just doing it, but there's nothing behind them. Yeah, they don't pretty much have... They don't have, like, a, res, uh, like a resume build up. Pretty much something that they can add to them. Like, oh, yeah, like... Like, I've already, like, performed in this stages before. Like, this is the works I've done for previously. Yeah. So pretty much just out of the blue. Yeah, and this one, the guy... You know, the guy didn't even want to see the video. He's all like, yeah, you have these two girls who went viral, but there's nothing to it. They didn't put out any music. There's not... They don't have an album to them. I can't... You know, I can't push this someone off for nothing. So... That ends up going belly up. But one of the more interesting things is Roddy goes to this woman that he had some form of history with. Oh, yeah. And she owned a very intimate little coffee shop. And he's like, look, can I just get them? Can I just get them one song? And same thing. It's like, I'm, I'm not going to waste a slot on someone big for these girls. And, you know, she just caved in because he said, like, there's something about these girls' music that resonated with me. That's why I'm willing to put myself out there. So, you know, mm -hmm. she buys it, um, gives them one song, and only because they're opening up for another band. Yeah. And they go, and they sing one song, and just like all of the Kel and Tuesday songs, it's very personal and intimate and to the heart. And one of the subplots going on, too, is the mom, Tuesday's mom, is looking for her. Because, yeah. you know, runaway child. So she sends her brother after her, and the brother is... You know, was pretty hot on a trail. He unknowingly talked to the landlord and was like, I'm looking for this girl. I'm no in danger. I'm her brother. She ran away. I just want to know where she's at. And he lies and says, I don't know where she's at. And he stumbles upon the place while they were singing, sees how happy she was and like how he's seen her in a light. He's never seen her before. Yeah. And just walks away. No, yeah. It's one of those things where you kind of like, where you just feel a sense of sympathy again because... You know, especially when it comes to being a musician as well, and this is one of the things that I love about the anime, mm -hmm. just showing those little steps, is, like, pretty much like you mentioned, being a musician, it's really difficult to, like, kind of get a start and everything just because there's so much competition, there's other people who have already kind of established themselves before you've already started yourself as well, so it's kind of hard to kind of, like, try to get your name out there, you kind of get a foothold on it, so... Family, whenever they hear like a child wants to be a musician or anything, they're like, oh, it's just a phase or anything, or it's just going to pass by eventually and they're going to actually get serious after yeah. this. And it's funny because I wish there was maybe like a little thing kind of explaining why they didn't do it for her because there's that whole thing where she runs off and the mom is like, you know, she ran away from this house. She never had to worry about anything. She's a school dropout. And she ran away from it. And it's one of those cases like, well, if you're claiming to give her whatever she wanted, why don't you put some money and help her become a musician? Mm -hmm. But it's one of those cases where it's like, oh, well, the mom finds it useless mm -hmm. and she's running off because she knows nothing's going to happen if she stays over there. Yeah, nothing's going to come of it. Yeah. And then, again, like when the brother saw her, like, you know, she's actually enjoying herself, she's in an establishment and everything, it's kind of more one of those things like, okay, 
So I don't have to worry as much about her. Like she's not like in the gutter or anything. She's not like you know nobody nobody trying to take advantage of her or anything like that as well. Yeah, she obviously has a friend. Yeah. Yeah. So kind of like that self assurance. Like okay, at least she's in good company for now. Yeah. Though, if you remember that Giggook video where he first covered the show. Oh, yeah. And it was in that um, that specific season, he was linking all the anime to specific hentai tags on Faku. And uh, and it's like, yeah, this seems like a pretty wholesome anime. And then he shows a photo of Gus and it has ugly bastard put oh, under it. Yeah. And like, no! Oh, actually, guys, he looks like he's going to be a really sweet and likable character. I'm just joking. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like... Ugly bastard. Yeah. I remember the video. Yeah, yeah, but it's like, oh, news. <laughs> they call Gus an ugly bastard. They do that enough in the show. Yeah, um, they do. He's but, just a drunkard. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but, th th you know, that ends up going pretty well for them because the owner of that establishment, it's to be expected that she called the guy that Gus spoke to, the event planner, yeah. and, you know, just vouched for them and said, hey, these girls are something. So the best they got was, hey, I scheduled this guy called Yoshua. He's in this heavy metal group who is infamous for not showing up at the last minute because the guy has horrible stage fright and he's a really bad alcoholic. Oh. Um, I think I think one of those two is conflicting. I think it might might be more the alcohol of anything. Yeah. Well. 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 The whole thing is they say he has really bad stage fright, so when he cancels on the show due to his sh shyness, he just dunks into alcohol. Yeah. But it's one of those cases where he was um, getting cleaned, yeah. and that's why they took a chance on him. But there was that 50-50 chance of he could show up, but he won't show up. So, um, going to episode 6, this is where we start getting a little bit more um, into the bigger world aspect of it. Where now, mm -hmm. not only are the music, not only is the music um, Carol and Tuesday, it's now these other artists stepping in. Yep, showing pretty much was like, you know, what's going around it, like nowadays, like what's popular and everything, what's like the current trend pretty much. Yeah. And um, what ends up happening here is they end up going to the festival and one of the, one of the funny reoccurring jokes is that they keep having the risk of running into Erdogan. Oh, yeah. And there's a part where they see Roddy and they're talking to him and he's all like, um, guys, go, go, quick. And then Erdogan shows up and it's like, ugh. Did you also think you had the voices of those two awful girls right now? <laughs> it's like, oh man, he really doesn't like them. Uh, but they end up having to hide in this trailer of another artist, which I really want to get that song he sings. Um, oh yeah, the one you were talking about earlier. Yeah. Um, where they go in and they think, oh man, these are like some hardcore gangster rappers. And he goes in and he tells them like, are you those girls from those videos? It's like, yes. It's like, oh... I forget exactly what he tells them, but he tells them something saying like, look, you're starting off, uh, you're going to have a lot to follow up after this. Like, basically, it's one of those don't trust a book by its cover because this is a very, you know, nice guy who was just saying like, you guys got this far now, it's up to you to kind of go the rest of the way by Kind yourself. of like the, like the, the middle, the, the mentor in the middle. Yeah. Um, Senpai. That's all, I, I can, that's all I can say right now because I forgot the actual term. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I like, I like that song that they played with together as well. Yeah, I'm, God, I'm trying to look for that one guy. Oh, okay, I found it. It's Ooh. called Unrequited Love. Unrequited. Uh, yes. Oh. But what was the guy's name, though? What's that song? Let me see if maybe it's in the comments. Yeah. Oh, no comments on it. But yeah, I forget this guy's name, but man, he has a really. Let me see if I can just get to it. There we go. Skip! Oh, okay. I thought that was the name of the actual artist. I didn't want to give the actual artist the credit. Yeah, yes. Skip. Yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you for 
Yeah, it's such a... This is the kind of music I grew up with when I was, like, little. This is a lot of the music my dad would listen to. Mm -hmm. Or I'd hear at parties. So I obviously, you know, when I heard this, this kind of took me back to, oh, man, this is a lot of the music I like because of when I was growing up and... I actually know the genre of it, unlike a certain anime YouTuber that made me laugh when he was covering it for his end of year video, where he's all like, well, Kill on Tuesday went into rock, uh, folk music, EDM, and whatever the hell this is. And I'm like, you mean R&B? Yeah! <laughs> you don't know what R&B is? Dude! <laughs> I love you, Jacob, but really? Whatever the hell this is? Yeah, I'm all like, uh... I think whatever the hell this is would have worked if you used one of, like, the Mars Brightest yeah. musicians. But, like, you're, you're talking about a guy who has, like, three songs in this show, and it's very apparent that this is R&B. You don't know what R&B is. No, man. For me, the music I grew up with was rock and roll a lot, because that's what my dad used to listen to a lot. Yeah. My dad was a lot of Santana and, like, R&B music. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, dude, my dad loves Santana. I think, like, one of his happiest moments... Oh, was it Santana? No, I think it was Los Lobos. Like, he saw Los Lobos live, and that, to this day, was, like, one of the happiest moments. He even has, like, this thing that was signed by all of them. No shit! <laughs> but, yeah, it, as you see, it's a very powerful melody, oh, yeah. and uh, I we talk about him a lot, so we'll get one of his songs ready to play. But it's one of those cases where they're just listening to these other musicians, and... One of the problems that ended up happening was Yoshua did show up, and yeah, he ended up not playing after all. Yeah. But what ended up happening is, well, they just went up there. Oh yeah, they had to compose a rock song out of that out of nowhere, right? Yeah. Well, they wanted to, and then they ended up sleeping and not really doing the melody. So they went ahead and just played the first thing that came to their mind. But right in the in the middle of their performance, Yoshira just cuts them off. And it's like, are you guys ready to rock? It's like, yeah! So they got, like, completely overshadowed there. But, you know, a few people... Uh, not a few people. It was, like, 100,000 people. Uh, that was, like, one of the big things that was scaring Tuesday. <laughs> Where even Tuesday wanted Yoshira to show up. Um, oh, yeah. But, yeah, you know, they went up there and they... Um, and, and they had their little moment there. No, nope. sorry. Uh, well, they even had the little moment there, so from that point on, we should be going to episode six? No. Seven. Seven, thank you. Yeah, seven after that one. Oh! Because this is where we're getting Mars Brightest yeah. now. Close yeah, to the <laughs> no, we're on Mars Brightest. That the new media fails, go old school. Gus gets Carol and Tuesday to try out for the amateur singing show Mars Brightest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, um... um you can take this. Uh, we'll, play, we'll play some other gun real fast before we get to like the weirder music <laughs> that's like, showing up here. Uh, but yeah, let, let me just play a little bit of other gun. A little bit. I um, think this one's it. No. Yeah, it's who up. Uh, yeah, there it is. It's like, who am I the greatest? But it's not the actual scene, but it's like him narrating it. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good music. Like, holy shit. So, the guy doing this is called Taco Takahashi. And it is really fucking good. Like, th this is one of those problems that I have with, um mainstream culture and EDM, when people think of dubstep, they think of... When people think of dubstep, they think of this. Oh, oh yeah! <laughs> EDM, they think of like dubstep and yeah. spillings and the blah 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 blah. But people forget that like a lot of EDM is just. God, I love how it works. Like it just turns into squawking. Yeah. Ah! 
Oh, uh, well, we'll get more on that right now. I think, if I remember correctly, there is an actual video of just like all of the auditions. Um, no, yeah, you got a lot of different ones. Like, there's like one guy, remember the one guy, Bulldog, who wanted to be the wannabe um, gangster rapper? Yeah, the, the guy who was flat out like, man, I killed people when I was a drug dealer. And like, he was good, but then he ended up getting kicked off because he was lying about his past. You yep. know, like, my boy was a little meek man. He was big, but he was a sweet kid. And you know what the funny part is? It's because like, um, that's actually, um, what, what, um it's funny because they actually post one of like, um, old rap culture. Because a lot of like the old, um, rap, um, I forgot who it was, but there was a, there was a one rapper who was infamous, you know, like they made him sound like he was from the hood and everything. Mm -hmm. um, I learned this from my ethnic studies class. But then, like, my teacher, he shows us, like, a really old video of him and, like, pretty much all in red and everything playing at a disco party. He's like, yeah, man, if he was, if, if he was living up the past, he was actually talking about, man, he should not be wearing those colors at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it, it, it's one of those cases where they, where they built a persona around yeah. him. Yeah. Um, in order to kind of sell an image because they were afraid, oh, well, they're not going to buy it with that background. Yeah. But it, it, it is um, one of those cases, though, where you get... Like, you know, with EDM, sorry, like going back to EDM real quick, people forget that a lot of EDM music is a lot of slow melodies, you have trap, you have trap, you have trance, which is the very easygoing, slow music, you have dead mouse, daft punk. And then you got go all the way to like core music and everything, like J-core and everything like that. Yeah. Which is, oh my god, it's so good, but then it has like those nasty beats that are like, the song could do without this. Yeah, like you have... Um, the Ken Arai, who did the music for Parasite. Yeah. Well, a lot of the music worked, but then you'd go into, like, the really nasty beats, and it'd be like, uh, this, this shouldn't be in a, a score for, like, media, yeah. dude. Uh, it's good on its own, but it doesn't belong in a scene. Yep. Uh, but, yeah, pe people forget that, like, there's some beautiful EDM in, like, Uragun and Steve, um, Steve Aoki... Hey. And um, uh, Taco Takashi, who did the song that we played, like, there's a lot of the really good beats out there. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm pretty sure that was, I'm pretty sure that was just Skrillex stepping in, like, okay, I wrote something. Um, <laughs> do you want me to compose it? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Here, I made this. Yeah. <laughs> We're done. Uh, but yeah, they go into Mars Brightest, which is essentially a... Um, uh, America's Got Talent. No, like American Idol. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is American Idol because it was specifically music. America's yeah. Got Talent was, is everything. It's just, yeah. So here we go. Some of the weirder ones. This is just some big lady dancing. Nicki Minaj. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no. I love how her face just gets always serious. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I love the ending to this one. <laughs> oh, you yeah. got AI from the other episode. I swear I heard this somewhere else before. <laughs> the old guy. Yeah. I bet. I bet you this is how the other judges feel. They're like, oh god, why am I here? <laughs> oh yeah. My name is Sean, and I'm nine years old. This is a dummy. <laughs> it's like, oh. You know what's funny? Cause when you look at the guy. Yeah, yeah, it's flat out like, oh yeah, you can tell this is a visually Chris act. <laughs> yeah, this. Oh yeah, the first one to actually make him laugh, and this is just the guy, uh, a guy in a really weird like do rag just singing, <laughs> and the way like... they really liked this guy. He wasn't in the main line. He probably yeah. got eliminated the wrong way. Yeah, this is guy just going off on a... Uh, on a sitar, no less! Yeah. A fucking Japanese traditional instrument! Yeah, it's so awesome. My mother passed away recently. She always used to sing me this song. <laughs> she always just... I can see you burning Ben for this. Like, ben, this is gonna be your kids after you are gone. Yeah, oh, I was just gonna be like, oh yeah, Ben loves his dubs. Ben loves his EDM. 
I am made of Martian. I'm a made of Martian. <laughs> I'll sing a Martian, a Martian song. I <laughs> Dude, that's of seventh element! Yeah. You know what I saw, I've heard that word. Here, I'll show you the exact video. That's uh, that's Vita's seventh element, um, um, Changum Bandrum. Oh shit, I gotta save my battery. <laughs> I'm at 5% right now. Um, but yeah, so... Here, yeah, this see. is who this guy was all after the freaking... But I'll show you who... Skippable ad. I know, but it's a five second one though. Oh, speaking of American Idol... Let me see. This is the guy he's parroting. That's why. Yeah, yeah, I've seen this before. That's what he was parroting. That's why it sounded familiar. Yeah, I've heard that before. <laughs> Dude, when you when I saw, I was like, that's me, the seventh element. <laughs> yeah. Would be surprised if maybe they contacted him to do it. <laughs> And that's like the what do you think? Team got the little dance like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Um, here's the thing: if you watch a lot of like American Idol, you do see that there's a lot of weird people coming in there who don't quite understand what kind of show this is. Yep. So you do get people like I'm gonna hula hoop while singing Old Town Road for you, <laughs> and then like drop the hula hoop as soon as they start. Um, but in this one, you saw like an AI where it's like, oh, I'm a little girl puppet. No, it's like, it was a puppet. The it's like, yeah, where it's like, oh, I'm a little girl puppet. But behind you see like this dude who looks like a punk rocker. And then it's suddenly it just starts going up and doing death metal. And then, and remember, there's different kinds of metal. You've got your ska, you've got your shredder and everything. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and, but, but like, again, you do see a lot of these people here. And just think about the fact that the people who have to spend all day going through those other people, and there are people that are so weird, they can't even put them on TV. Like, you know, th there's been a couple of those guys saying like, man, there was one guy who literally stripped in front of us and <laughs> had to cut that off. It never made it, it, I think it was, I forget what season of American Idol it was, but it was flat out like, yeah, there was a guy who tried to strip right in front of them while he was singing because he was getting that into the song and they never showed it on TV. Like, they go through a lot of weird stuff, so it, it's really funny how this was where um, Watanabe very much took the I very much took this opportunity to just throw the humor in everywhere. Oh yeah, yeah. Because <clears throat> you know that's how you get some of like the best music too, and and then some of like the more like surprises as well too. Because like some some people like oh this is the one thing as well when they um when they put like America's Got Talent mm -hmm. because um <clears throat> uh, psychology time with Rui I guess yay. <laughs> But one of the things that uh, one of the things that's actually pretty like common in a lot of these shows is the halo effect. You know what that is? Hmm. So the halo effect is pretty much like you know if you see somebody who's like pretty or somebody who looks like really like you know pretty handsome, somebody's like a good looking person, you assume like oh this is the talented person we've been waiting for. Finally, someone is gonna go there. You never suspect the meek looking or like the average looking or below average looking people to be like the superstars. Yeah. Because he was showing us a video of like this one America's Got Talent where it's like this lady. She wanted to sing like a song by Mariah Carey, but like one of the guys, like the judge Simon, he was kind of being, you know, pretentious and everything. He was like saying, like, oh, like, you really want to sing that song for us? Like, you sure about that? You know, they were giving her a hard time. But then she pulled it off and everything, and it shocked all the judges because they weren't expecting her to sing, like, to, to pull out the exact pitches and everything. Yeah. And they were like, oh my god, like, where did that voice come from? And like, at one point, like, one of them had to apologize to her. He was like, sorry for like the treatment or anything. Yeah, it was like, it wasn't Susan Boyle, was it? I think it might have been. Yeah, like the really, you know, uh, pardon my French. The very unattractive looking woman. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was the one where she sung a song and. I mean, it just, it just like shocked the judges because they weren't expecting that. Yeah, I made Simon <laughs> cry at one point and they're like, holy fuck. Like, we feel. Like, she became big news because you're right. They were like, are you sure you want to do that, sweetheart? Are we going to get another dubstep granny up in here? Oh, yeah. No, it's like, oh, no, there are people with voices of an angel. And um, I might ha I might need you to start taking over the, the clip thing because I'm only at five yeah. right now. Yeah, all right. I but like, you. if you can go and bring up um, OG Bulldogs, 
Um, oh, yeah. Because Kel and Tuesday, they, you know, obviously they make it into the qualifying rounds. Bulldog Anthem. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there we go. Right, and, we to play. and how Mars Brightest happens is it's a competition show, like a, like a tournament arc. Where somebody being shot twelve times, I forgot about it. Yeah, yeah, he got <laughs> shot twelve times, uh, killed people, and like sold drugs. They're like, what kind of? What's the guy like that doing here? But no, he's a um, um, it, it it's basically a tournament system where it's all like they will go. It will be two singers going at it. They'll get eliminated until eventually there's only two standing, mm -hmm. um, and eventually one standing. This pretty much camp rock. Yeah. Oh, flat out camp rock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but <laughs> God damn. <laughs> oh my God! Why you, you have to hit me? Why you have to hit me like that? But yeah, the, Kelvin Tuesday. Um, which mind you, what's going on right now is Tuesday is afraid that they're gonna be found out by um, uh, by the mom. Yeah, because like this is pretty much like we're actually getting close to that episode where the mom's actually trying um um looking for um looking for her and then. Remember the other present that explodes? Yeah. Well, I know. We'll get to that. Yeah, right we'll now. get to that soon. Because yeah. that, that literally happens after, I think, what? It was after this episode or two episodes after this? It was two episodes after. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, what, what ends up happening is uh, they, um, they're, they're in the very first audition for Mars Brightest. And Tuesday was trying to play herself off as a different character. And they're like, okay, well, how about you, Carol? You talk for her. Uh, Carol, where have you come from? And we find out that Carol was an Earth refugee mm -hmm. who was sent to Mars, was in an orphanage all her life, never got picked up, mind you. Um, and she's always been fending for herself. And it made Carol realize that ever since she got here, it's been all about her. Like, I don't want my mom finding Tuesday. It's been all about her. <laughs> I don't want my mom finding me. I want to be famous too. Um, she only ever acted... She felt that she was only ever using Tuesday at Carol as a, a catalyst to get what she wanted. Mm -hmm. So when she found out that she was a refugee, she realized there's a lot I don't know about this girl. And yeah. I, here I am telling this girl that I want to play music with her forever. So, and, um, yeah, no, I, I think that covers it until... Because I was going to talk about her half-hearted attitude. Yeah. So we could do that when we get to Sybil. Um, no, yeah, because at that point, that's pretty much where, like, that's pretty much where, like, a lot of stuff starts happening and everything, and when the show really begins to pick up. Yeah. So, they end up having to go again. They're, they're like, the first people who have to go up, and they have to go up against this scary guy called OG Bulldog. Um, Mind you, there's a group actually called o Ed, OG, and the Bulldogs. <laughs> Maybe that's where you got it from. Yep. But, yeah, um, this, yeah, uh, just click anyone, I guess. Yeah. So this is a rapper who claims he had a really tough life, and man, I, I listen to this a lot. Everybody just waiting in anticipation. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, the little AI dog. Yeah, they're like, what? Is this Latin? <laughs> it, it is Latin! It's yeah, the uh, I was gonna tell you, look for a comment where it translates the song. <laughs> it may be somewhat inaccurate, but in case there is anyone wondering about the lyrics. And there's even one part where he has a dog. Well, like, the AI dog is even like, holy crap. This is a song about God. Oh, I just read the Latin. This is a song about God. It's literally just like it's literally just the Ave Maria, but now it's just God instead. Yeah. That yeah, and by this point he's saying Amen. Alright, that's it. Yeah, that. Like, like, it's funny what ends up happening to him, like, immediately after this, yep. but, um, god, that was badass. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, oh, what's he, what rapper do they get to do the, oh my god, he's doing rock opera in Latin, holy shit, this is awesome. <laughs> and, but, you know, Kel and Tuesday go up and they play their folksy, cute little song, but one of the reasons they won was, one, 
they are one of the few people in here that are doing non AI created songs, and that really resonated with the Simon Cowell yeah. <laughs> in the panel, which is a female judge. Um, and she and she was like, "Look, I never thought that rap and opera could go together. You proved me wrong. That was great, but yeah, we talked to your mother in the audience, and yeah." He was a big boy, but he was very soft-hearted and meek. What? He wasn't in any gang stuff. He, he wouldn't be able to handle it. Yeah. And then it's like, but a drug dealer? I mean, he worked at a drugstore for a summer, <laughs> but like, he wasn't a drug dealer. No, technically he could claim he was a drug dealer, but of the legal kind. Yeah. That one he can, he can, he can definitely bypass. He never said illegal drug dealer. Yep. He said drug dealer, so he's fine. But yeah, it's like... He got eliminated because of like, if you're not being honest with us, then what, what makes you think that you're being honest with your music? Mm -hmm. So yeah, you got eliminated. And then of course, you know, we won't be playing all of their songs. Um, definitely the, definitely the heavy metal, uh, like the heavy metal gampers. So those guys are awesome. The 99 year olds? Yeah. <laughs> 99 year old twins. Uh, but, let me see what they were called. But you have, um... Fire Brothers, yeah, never oh, die. Okay, good, so now we know what to look for. Uh, but you have a Logan Paul type character in here. Oh yeah! yeah. Oh yeah! <laughs> Which, um, in the dub, he's actually being voiced by the guy who does uh, Speed of Sound Sonic and the bow hero in uh, Shield Hero. Um, so the voice definitely does not sound like the singing voice. But he's he's one of the people that whoever they're getting to do his music is really good. Yep. Yeah, I'm not typically into that kind of style, but I'm like, man, I'm kind of getting into this. This is good. Um, and then you have a really weird character in there called GGK. Oh, yeah. <laughs> who is a girl who believes that she's being possessed by um, cosmic entities that are creating the music for her. She's pretty much just she's pretty much the modern day Jeanne d'Arc. Yeah, and she, her whole music is singing melodies and kind of repeating the same line over and over again, which again isn't bad, but it kind of made a problem when she went up in her second round, yep. and she got to, you know, kicked out. She, she lost because it felt too much like the first one, and yeah. that's something you never want to do. You yeah. never want to repeat the same act twice, especially in a talent competition. Yeah, exactly. Um, you want me to play the old man's now? Yeah, go ahead and do the five others before I get too far. <laughs> and these are like two geriatric old men. Yeah, they don't look like they should be playing this kind of music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're like, wait, what? Yeah, this no. is what you were talking about, huh? No, I'm talking about the top comment near death. <laughs> Oh, I like this one. <laughs> <laughs> and that is when they die. <laughs> I'm just glad you made it through. <laughs> Yeah, so that top comic cannot be more accurate. It's a new genre, near death. Man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, why are you laughing already? It's like, oh shit, that's awesome. Near death metal. <laughs> Underrated comment. I'll give that one a like. I rarely do this. Yeah. Um. They. That that whole thing was. They got eliminated. Oh, uh, get the mermaid sisters ready. Uh, uh they get. Oh. Yeah, the, the, they get eliminated because they're like, yeah, the music made them appear, um... What was it called? Oh, oh, just put in Mermaid Sisters. All right, then. Yeah, that's their name. Um, but they did... <laughs> uh, they got disqualified, not disqualified, they lost n nearly... Oh, yeah. Yeah, n nearly just because they went up against someone better than them. But they did appreciate the fact that they were, they felt like decades younger when they were doing the music. Like, it, the death metal really brought them to life. <laughs> the near death metal. <laughs> yeah, so let's go ahead, similar to OG Bulldog, let's talk about people who got disqualified <laughs> because... Of the this... kind of music, well, not only that, but just... 
Yeah, yeah, I think it's better just to let you hear this one. Yeah, yeah. so this is a song called Cosmic Cosmic Mermaid. Galactic by, Mermaid. Galactic Mermaid by the um, four, well, most likely three. Just three. But like um, three um, brothers who are, um, you know, they're, they're between male and female. So they identify as mermaids because they are fish nor human. So um, let's go ahead and get that clip ready. I think it's the 42 second one. Yeah. God damn it! We are not being sponsored by Raid! I know, so good. I want to look the light. Oh. Cutting it too early, but they that they weren't even done with the song. They were going into another verse, but the judge cut them, them off. off yeah. yeah, they're like, I don't even have to tell you why you guys aren't winning. <laughs> like they even announced the winner before they even criticized them. They're like, I don't even have to tell you guys why you lost. You you mixed in beautiful melodies with just disgusting lyrics, and the people are like, these are the these are the words that we know. These are the words that. Um, uh, that represent us, and then they end up attacking the judges. <laughs> they had to cut it. Yeah, <laughs> just because I was getting already out too out of hand as well. Yeah, and this is the one. This is the one song that made me question. Like, am I watching the right show? Yeah, I'm not even watching the right one anymore. <laughs> again, it's one of those things like you. Again, it's a really serious show, but just like with all came um, with um, she needs to watch the novice at work. You'll throw in a curveball and then they just kind of like make you second guess yourself. Am I watching the right thing? Anymore? Yeah, yeah. The, uh, like this is the guy who made an alien parody episode where they were getting attacked by um, a spoiled leftovers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the guy who randomly put zombies in the middle of a uh, of his samurai epic story. Oh yeah. Samurai Champloo, where he had zombies who didn't know they were dead. Uh, but yeah, it. It's one of those cases where I think it's time to address the elephant in the room. I think that's the right song right there. Move Mountains. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a character we've actually been overlooking. And initially it went from unintentionally to intentionally overlooking it. Um, but there's a character who has a plot running parallel to Carol and Tuesday called Angela, mm -hmm. and she is a child <laughs> star who is specifically a child model who, you know, grew up, she's 16 by the time the story starts, Yeah, and she wants to make the jump from being a child model to a singer. Mm -hmm. So her whole thing is her mom, who is a trans woman, uh, a very, very scary trans woman at first though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which they flat out tell you, yeah, they're not living together because the mom, like, abused her at one point, tried to strangle her. Oh, yeah. Um, Pretty much, like, you know, like the drama that you see a lot that you never realize a lot of child dom, a lot of child dom, child stars from our time actually suffered through as well. Yeah, and, and, and even, like, th there's even one point that one of the first interactions you have is she fires a manager and the mom like grabs her by the face and even says like I don't want to have to go through like more managers just because you're acting like a brat. Do not blow what we're trying to do for you here. It's like oh man, this is oh, this is a creepy Definitely. character. Yeah, it's, it's it's another episode of Dan Dancing Moms. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> no longer about the kids anymore. Just how fucked up the moms are. Yeah. But you know we do get backstory for them too. But they were a child actor and they also got washed up by the time they were in their twenties. Oh yeah. And no one cared about them by that point. So now that he's pushing out Angela, he she my bad. Um, she's pushing Angela to become a singer because she realizes oh she's sixteen. She's going to dry up soon. Yeah. If we can get her to be a singer, then she'll be fine. 
So they end up taking it to this That's guy. Literally, what happened to a lot of the child actors we saw? I mean, look at the um, look at the girl who played on um, freaking um, Megan from um, from Jake and Josh. The singer yeah. Selena Gomez. Well, Selena Gomez already had that going for her all the time. Yeah, and unlike Miranda Cosco, Selena Gomez actually did turn out some bangers. Yep. At least when she was with the scene, as soon as she left that group. Oh know, yeah. yeah. And then who else? Right. Well, uh, what was her name? Ariana Grande. Ariana. Yeah, she blew up. She got lucky. Yeah, she got uh, lucky. She blew up pretty well. Uh, Victoria Justice is another one. She's mm-hmm. a failure story, though. Yeah. She was really hot when she was, like, acting and all that. Yeah. And then she tried to become a singer and she tanked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but they end up taking her to this guy called Tao, who oh, is... Oh, yeah, the, the, the one who trained on train on the stars. Yeah. Well, he created this... Uh, he, you, he believes in the full usage of AI... And he um, created a song for her. But instead of, like, creating a song specifically for her and um, tuning it, and tuning the song to her abilities, he's trying to tune her to the song. Yeah. So there's that whole part where he's trying to put her through a... Vocal um, training, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, vocal training. And it goes from, like, you know, him pinching her Adam's apple and, um, <clears throat> and like opening her mouth and trying to get it to get different tones. Even at one point, he psychologically, uh, like, tortures her when he's like, okay, if you can't reach that note, I guess we'll have to go with plan B. And you just see these drills and lasers going towards her face. And when she screams, they realize, oh, I hit the note. (laughs) (laughs) But she ends up going to Morris Brothers because they got a 10 hun- they got like a 10 million or like a hundred million investment on her yeah and but they're like look I don't want to just throw you out there you need to have some fire behind you so we're gonna have you on the show this is gonna be our way of selling you and then even if you don't win we have the money ready to push you ahead exactly so it's just kind of again marketing strategy just trying to get exposure Giving her some more exposure to the outside world. Yeah, um, if people remember, there's this episode of That So Raven, where Raven was dealing with this troublemaker girl who oh, was like yeah. a, um, you know, who was like a comedian. Mm-hmm. She was making fun of Raven and everyone, and she was a really funny little girl. She was in the first or second season of America's Got Talent, because it was one of those cases where she was selling herself as a child comedian, and... It was one of those cases where people were like, well, she was already in a Disney Channel show. And it's like, yes, that was her one role. And this is her trying to get even more exposure as like the kid going up against adults in, you know, a, a show. Yeah. And she was on the big stage too. So it, it was one of those, um, it, this was one of those cases too, where they're trying to push this girl who's already kind of established through a talent show. Yep. And she ends up, Probably being one of my favorite singers. Go ahead and let's play a little bit. Wait, is that the right one? Yeah, move mountains. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is just the one where she goes up and they're like, holy shit, where'd that come from? <laughs> Ooh, that auto too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, that lady's like, what, what? I want to get to that part where she hits those notes. I hope this is the one, because you only know the other one, like... There you go. Fuck! <laughs> there she is. Yeah, they're like, oh my god. And again, four counts. Yeah. One, 
two, three, four, one, two. Ah, it's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you're gonna be crazy. Next time I come back next week, your house is just gonna be scribbled for. You're like, <laughs> oh, all over the place. Yeah, all of these songs. They hit the four notes. Every song, Barney, Teletubbies, all of them. It's like, yeah, that's kind of a basic thing. It's a clue, Daddy. You know, Daddy. <laughs> it's like it just turns into that scene. Like the numbers, Mason. What do they mean? <laughs> Why does why does these sets of four smell? I ran out of ink, okay? Ah. <laughs> yeah. Takes over me, man. Yeah. But it's so true though. After that, after that class of music appreciation, I was like, you know what? He's right. It is everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, but yeah. Oh, we have a live version too. I listen to that later. Oh yeah, I listened to that. Yeah, when you were saying auto tune, it's like I think that video was made to tell people, no, I'm not being auto tuned. <laughs> oh yeah, like the guy who um, the guy who sang um, uh, TK from um, from Lintel Sight Sigger. Yeah. Who well, like wait, you think he's auto tuned, but now he he just hits it like that's just how he sings. I, I know. I remember there's one guy where he's like, yeah, the opening to Psychopaths is really good, but it's auto tuned, so it's not that good. And it's like, uh, let's go ahead and play the acoustic version for Tokyo Ghoul. And it's like, holy shit, that's just his voice. It's yeah. Like, yeah, no shit. The only person being auto tuned is that girl who in the band and linked to say. So, yeah. Yeah, he. D you know what's funny. We had all this great music in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, and he ended up doing the Japanese version of the theme song. Oh, yeah. shit, really? Yeah, look it up later. It's called PS, PS Red Eye. It's yeah, right. really good. I'm like, holy shit, this is great. But, um, uh, Oops. but I guess it's time to go into, like, not just the people... Uh, yeah, that top one's good. But not just the people who are in the background... Uh, no, not just the people who are singing, but like some of the stuff that was going on in the background. Like you get this really great on-running joke of um, Gus, <laughs> of Gus and uh, Angela's mom having to sit together. Oh yeah. And they're all being very spiteful to each other, and they're like, oh, "I heard the girls are gonna win this year." It's like, "Well, I heard Angelo is suited." I just love mimicking voices like that. Sorry, people. I heard Angelo is a shoe in this year, but yeah, it's like. They have this whole thing where even at one point, poor Roddy has to sit between them and yeah. you just feel the tension in the air between them. It was like, hey, can you tell that idiot to shut up? Like, stuff like that. But it's, oh my God, man. You, like, like it's, you have these great little moments, but I think one of, them, one of the parts that tell you that this show is not fucking around is Carol and Tuesday end up meeting a contestant called Sybil. Who is a girl who seems to have this huge attraction towards uh, Tuesday, uh, always being the first to comment on all of her stuff and you know sending an anonymous text. Um, well, no, not not no, not anonymous text, but like she asks for a number, gives her a number, and almost immediately the girl starts blowing up Tuesday's stuff with a bunch of like really weird text messages. Yep. Uh, but you already can... I was already able to pick up that something was not going to be right about this character when she goes in like, Oh my god, I touched you. Oh, can I get a hug? Oh, can I get... And, like, it's cut Just off. Just keeps escalating and yeah. Yeah, and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> this isn't good. What is this? And she's like, oh, I found out you were going to go... I found out you were um, going... You know, you were in this contest, so I wanted to be in the contest too in the hopes of meeting you. And given, like, just because we're running a little late on time now, she has a very good song here. Oh, you want me to play it? Oh, uh, yeah, a little bit. Like, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, let's not play the whole thing because we are getting a little late in there. Uh, What's it called? What's song called? Uh, just put in Sybil. Was it like S-I-V-L or was it S Y V L? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, and... Um, S-Y-B-E-L-L. -L. Or I... Oh, no, it's C. My bad. Civil, yeah. The same ranger. Carol and Tuesday, yep. Yeah, yeah, I knew the songs. La Ballade. Uh, with English lyrics, English, French song, the French song. <laughs> I'll go with the first one. Yeah, the, the person they get singing is has a really cute voice. <laughs> Blush. 
kiss. Yeah. The only other person he blushed for was Piotr. Yep. Yeah, I really like this song. Alright. Uh, I think that's good. But yeah, she was very talented, but one of the things that she, you know, that she starts um, putting at Tuesday is, hey, do you want to join a band together where we can be Sybil in Tuesday? And Tuesday kind of, she did, she did those things that I hate. She didn't say no, but she didn't necessarily say yes. Yeah, yeah. kind of in the middle. Yeah, and that kind of leads to this problem that Tuesday, that Carol had with her is she has this half-hearted attitude that even in the, she even kind of feels it in the music that she's not putting 100% into it. Mm -hmm. And she knows we're never going to win the contest if you, you know, play that way. So she ends up realizing that, oh, the girl here is annoying and there's even a part where Sybil is getting scared. This like before this scene where she's singing, she goes to Tuesday for comfort. She hugs Tuesday and bites her neck. Oh, <laughs> that's what, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because you know that whole thing where she says like, "Oh, I lost, but at least we're gonna be Sybil in Tuesday, right?" It's like I decided no, I just want to focus on one group, and it's like. What? You lied to me. I even mocked you to make you mine. I'm like, oh, is that what the bite was? Oh, God, what is this? So, in the, in the next episode, uh, I think this is like 9 or 10, uh, but she ends up coming back and says, hey, I got you guys a gift, um, you know, as a celebration for you winning. He was like, don't you think it's too early for that? He was like, yeah. You have the present. Yeah, yeah, the present. I was like, no, no, it's fine. Okay, I'm going to leave now. And <laughs> uh, Carol, um, uh, Tuesday, after getting into an argument, uh, after feeling bad for, you know, hurting that girl's feelings, uh, she opens the present. It explodes, but it's like dry ice. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of something like that. It's like a, it was like a clinical reaction because it does leave her with a burn mark and everything. Yeah, and it was like causing her hand to swell so she couldn't play the guitar. And... It was one of those cases where they started looking through the security cameras to figure out who it was. And the only reason they caught her was Piotr was filming stuff in the back lot when he wasn't supposed to. And they ended up finding the girl that they were describing. It was a tall, lanky girl. And initially, Angela had accused her new manager of doing it because she thought her and the mom were in on it together. Mm -hmm. um, even going as far to going to the mom and asking her if she did plant the, you know, plant the gift and the mom kind of admitted to it, but then you realize, wait, I thought you were talking about the soda. It's like, no, it's like, oh, then I don't know what you're talking about. So yeah, not even Angela's mom and like manager planned anything. This was just a crazy person who's like, oh, well, when they caught it, she's like, oh, did you get hurt? Well, good. That's divine punishment for, like, leading you on. This is God punishing you for hurting me. It's yep. like, oh boy, get the crazy chain out of here, please. And that's the funny thing, too, because a lot... Uh, this think, episode should have been called Crazy Chain. Exactly. Yeah. And then a lot of the things I'm reading from the comments as well is, like, she's actually a really popular character from the... From, uh, well, Occupy, she likes Sybil. The only thing is that, they, like, again, they liked her when she was singing, but they just really questioned... They, it's just, like, one of those questionable things, like... Am I morally a bad person just for liking this person? Because, you know, they sing really well, but they're questionable in real life. Yeah, she's one of the best singers in here. And even when she first starts, she's harmless, except for a few red flags here and there. But, yeah, I even had to admit, I only like your singing. You as a person are a fucking monster. Uh, but, yeah, so... Um, a lot of bi people going on here. Saying that I was like, damn, the minute she clicked her tongue, it turned instantly gay. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, you you have a, a gay, possibly bi uh, person in the audience. And he he probably only blushed because it's like, well, it looks like a boy. Or mm -hmm. it is a girl, so mm, I do like me my, I do like me my tomboys. Um, also, and I really do like how open the show is with uh, LGBT communities. Oh yeah, man, because again, I mean, it, um, um, pretty much like you started off with anything in Mars and everything, they treat it as a norm, like you get a lot of transgenders here. Yeah, a lot of transgenders, Gus's wife, the divorce failed because she was gay, 
Um, you have, um, obviously, uh, a giant... Sorry, sorry, this is who I was going for. Erdogan might be bi, because Erdogan flirts with Roddy and even says, I love capable men and great women. So, you know, you have Erdogan who might be bi, you have this character who's obviously gay or bi. Mm -hmm. You have, a, gut, you have a, a judge who's obviously gay or bi. Yeah, I, I really like how that's just the norm. They're not making a big deal out of it. She's a bad person because she's an obsessed fan, mm -hmm. not because she's a gay fan. But yeah, it, it's really, it, it's a really, really great episode that caught me off guard because I'm like, oh, oh, the show's going this way already. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, and it gets worse. Uh, we'll get to it in the second half. It gets worse. Yep. Um, but like skipping ahead, when they get into their argument about like, oh, you're half-hearted, none of this would have happened if it wasn't for your half-hearted attitude which led that go on in the first place. I don't think we're going to win if you keep playing the way we're playing. Um, she ends up getting abducted by her friends. Uh, by her family's personal guard yep. and getting sent back home where she's locked in her room yeah for a week and her brother you know her brother realizing like I think me seeing you in that club a few weeks ago was probably the first time I ever found out who my sister actually was because I never took the time to actually get to know you after I went to college and the kind of person you became so he helps her escape yeah and they escape, they go on Mars Brightus, and sadly, since they weren't there for the beginning of the show, they got disqualified. But they go in there, they sing the final version of Loneliest Girl, and the audience went off so hard that they're like, despite the fact you guys were disqualified, and it would be wrong if we bend the rules just because we like you, I guess the best we can do is Angela is the definite winner. But you guys will also be getting a contract. Yeah. And the show ends there. No, yeah, just so that way, like, it's kind of like a compromise. Yeah. Compromise, like, a, a middle ground right there. Yeah, you guys didn't win. Because it, the, the whole thing is, they wanted to give them the, they wanted to give them the winning spot, but that wouldn't be fair to Angela because she was there. Yep. So the best they could do is, there's two winners this year. Ah, I see what it is with Sybil. Why? No, I just realized why, why people like Sybil. Why? Yandere vibe. Yeah. Remember, people are suckers for Yandere's. She wasn't crazy enough for me. Not crazy life. enough, but she gives all that vibe. Yeah. Well, for me, because you know I do liking my Yandere's too, but she wasn't that crazy. No, she was not Yuno know, or like all the other Yandere's. Or that the, my favorite, the princess from Overlord. Oh, yeah. Who I'm like, man, this is a boring fucking character. Oh, hello. <laughs> Kill <laughs> Turns out to be a sadist. Yeah. Ki killing a maid in a freaking bathtub. That's hardcore. And when it's all like, oh, we have a bunch of injured victims. Oh, can I see them? No, that wouldn't be a good thing. <sighs> Wait, what was that? Nothing. It's like, Ooh. Oh, yeah. Like, like when Cloud was there. Yeah. He's like, he was like catching on. I was like, oh, nothing, just smiling to myself. Yeah, I'm like, oh, that's hot. <laughs> um, Oops. But yeah, um, that was Carolyn Tuesday. Part one. Part one. Yeah, so go ahead and play Hold Me. I, I forget, it's like Hold Me Down or something. Hold Me Now, yeah. Yeah. No! Hold Me Now, I'm gonna be... Oh, God, the music's so cute. Got you. After this commercial. God, I sound effects, kids, which are also Funko Pops. <laughs> okay, so you go first because this is my pick. So, <laughs> Carolyn Tuesday is actually one of those shows that I've actually started watching before you recommended it. However, it's one of those shows as well where, like, you know, I need to recap again because it's just one of those, um, one of those things that like, a lot happens and everything. And yeah. this is one of the things that I always notice whenever I watch an anime a second time. Let's get more details of later on as well. I'm yeah. pretty sure again, but watch this the third time. I would have noticed the things that you told me, you know, about like the kid appearing again when like um, when um, when Carol was high having the people, and you see the kid in a better state. Yeah, and then um, the guy from the laundry mat teaching him how to do the high five. Yeah, oh well, yeah, like the the um, the, um, the dap and everything as well. Yeah, and then this is funny because this is actually one show, one of the shows that my friends love listening to, like the um, OSTs and everything as well. Like, I mean, again, this was a playlist one when we went to Seattle and everything that we were listening to. Yeah. So, and again, it's one of those shows that like 
basically new and everything as well. It's like it doesn't show you, you know, like it's like a competition or anything. It's not somebody trying to like, you know, get out of depression or anything. Literally just two musicians trying to struggle just to get their name out there and try to become something new. Yeah, and not being afraid to touch in some of the darker aspects or some of the realer aspects of what really goes on. Exactly. Because again, well, one of the things, especially when you see a lot of documentaries about how like different um, different people got um, started, uh, I would name I would name some references, but they're mostly just Mexican singers I remember. Yeah. But like the like Selena, for example. Mm -hmm. The biggest one, obviously. The biggest one because Selena, um, her her father, she was she used to be the dean and part of the group band called Dinos, mm -hmm. and one of his um one of his um one of his ambitions was that he wanted his children to pretty much pick up where he left off because like. One of the reasons why he didn't make it bigger anymore is that his style of music was already starting to run dry back in Mexico. Mm -hmm. So now, kind of, this is good. damn, I'm already getting into it. I'm thinking about the movie right now. Yeah. Well, well now, that's why again when Selena, um, when when, um, when, she, when he was trying to force his dreams onto Selena and everything, it didn't go well with her because she just wanted to do something different. Yeah. She wanted to be do her own thing that was different from what her father wanted because his was more a little bit more old school kind of like blues and everything. Yeah, he didn't get the kind of music he was. She was doing. Yeah, where she wanted to be more upbeat and everything, go, go, go with more songs and everything, like the chico de la pata de cinco doce. No! Play that back! Oh, I thought it was longer than that. No, it's just 217. Oh. But yeah, so it's like you get to see again, like the struggle well, again, the struggles that the artist had to go to, like she had to pretty much like not only go against her father, but find a niche that was right for her. And then ah! Uh, Again, from the movie, love that scene where she's going to the mall looking for a dress and like this lady's like, oh, sorry, I didn't even look like you could afford this. And yeah. then you see all the Mexican people like, look, it's Selena. Yeah. And then she just, I love it when she spies it, like, you know what, I'm second thought, I'm not going to get the dress. Yeah, just like, oh, you just, you discriminated me so you don't get my millions of dollars. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, again, for me as well. The one thing that made this show attractive for me, not only like the fluid animation. Mm. No, this is bones. This is bones. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like mm. <laughs> the script peels off skin. Yeah. Oh god! <laughs> <laughs> not only the fluid animation, but just it brings something new again, and you don't get to see often when it comes to a lot of these animations as well. Kind of like well, kind of like what Myth Me Megalobox. For me, Megalobox. Oh, oh. gives some good vibes and everything. Yeah. This. Was the icing on top of it. Yeah, th this falls into a category of anime that we really like to bring up here is the anime where you can tell there's just so much art in here. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's one of the things that like resonated with me and Cameron Tuesday, and why I'm excited to visit the second part of this as well, because I know vaguely remember that this is where shit really starts to pick up and hit the fan. Yeah. Yeah, this is when people start getting arrested. <laughs> yeah, <but I'm> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, and for me. Looking forward to the second review. Your turn? Yeah, so, Calvin Tuesday is obviously one of those shows that I always have my eyes on. I, I, if I'm right, this show even got delayed at one point, because mm -hmm. I didn't have hearing about this all the way back in 2017. So... No, I continue, continue. Yes. <laughs> okay, anyway, <laughs> so... He ends, so, because this is something I heard in 2017, and I was under the impression that, oh, um, this is coming out in 2018, even to the fact that I remember seeing the poster of Calvin Tuesday, and I'm like, okay, so this is coming out sometime in 2018. It disappeared. I remembered it in December of 2018. I'm like, what did happen to that other show you was doing? Then I found out, oh, it's coming out in April. So at one point, this show probably got um, delayed, and I wouldn't... I, I wouldn't put it past them that maybe it was there was some rights issues going on with some of the music they were using. Oh, yeah. Um, even down to the point that a character who comes in in the second half, Ezekiel, that artist ended up having the song in the show leaked. <laughs> yeah. And it got leaked along with other music that wasn't supposed to be out yet. But it's, um, it's one of those shows that I'm like... The first episode, it resonated with me. That episode with the first jam session is like, this is going to be something different. And I'm really excited for it. Um, obviously, there's some great humor in here. There's something I always love holding above anything else in shows, but it has great characters who have amazing chemistry. And again, these are cartoon, these are anime characters, but they feel like real people. There's, mm -hmm. 
<laughs> just yeah. like kind of rooting off for them, and then like all the references to like the light, the actual shows that appear here and everything as well. Yeah, um, that them kind of even doing some world building with like you know they're talking about the refugees, and in the second season, South by South, why is the South by Southwest in Mars? And they explain that with world building. Um, I think the characters and the music are great. There are some scenes where the music from Kelvin Tuesday and even from Skip, they're so impactful and powerful that I actually did find myself crying in some of these scenes. And again, it's four fucking counts. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Oh, there you go again. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's one of those cases where I'm just like, this is phenomenal. And when they got to Morris Brightest and, you know, we got to the weird stuff and like the really great stuff, I really liked... I love that whole subplot with, um, I actually found myself getting really into the Tao and Angela subplot, even to the point where they have a hell of an ending. <laughs> like, there's a whole reveal with them where I'm like, whoa, shit, really? Um, but I love that whole, um, I, I love everything about this show. I really love that whole thing about Angela and Tao because of, you know, I like the idea of I created the song, but I'm not gonna tweak it to you. You need to elevate it to reach your to reach its levels. Yeah. And there's a reason why he was doing that. There's there's even a reason why the mom was like forcing her to be a singer and being so harsh on her. Um I really loved some of the moments where it kind of lifts away from reality where they will be playing music and there's just something so magical and endearing about it that suddenly there's a crowd gathering around them. Yep. I love that scene where they're in the laundry mat and they, they get that guy to play with them. Yeah, they get that guy to play with them and then you see people coming to the window and watching them. It's, it's those little moments of surrealness that I'm like, wow. It, it's funny that this is supposed to kind of like push you away from reality but that's really how some people will be when they see something that they feel is different. Yeah. Like, Roddy, you know, Roddy... Kind of like out of the norm, pretty much. Yeah, where Roddy's narrating half of the series, and he's like, I, I like Kill and Tuesday before they got famous, and when they played, those ten people who were in the club when they played, I don't think they're ever going to forget that first moment where the world finally met Kill and Tuesday. And yeah, I can't wait to do I'm just like you, I can't wait to do this second half. It gives me an excuse to watch this second half again. I really hope we can get Ben in on this because like this is probably where we're gonna talk about a lot of stuff where he wasn't aware what was happening. And then we're gonna revisit the Granny EDM. Yeah, we're gonna we're, we're gonna like just bring up dubstep granny again. Um, but yeah, overall I have to give this you know, I, I love this show. I'll probably be coming back and revisiting it one day. And think on the bright side. Now that we did this show, now we have to put come. Now we have to put semi shampoo on uh on, on this pretty much. Yeah, on uh Watanabe month. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, we're good then. Thank you. Oh, that count is gonna be stuck in my head for this next month, for this next year. Yeah. Two, three, four, five, six. At least it was an eight count this time. It was like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two. Yeah. Ah! Does this. Does this also have the rules of four? I don't know. Anyway, guys, this. <laughs> <laughs> this was Mustard Productions and Amazing.